more than 15 speakers will speak for you and answer all of your questions. More than 300 spectators from all over the world have already registered. Probably more will show up later on and they will actually hopefully share all of their questions with us to answer for you. Now, while we are waiting for our viewers to connect, I would like to ask those who've already connected to somehow write us some comments. They can tell us about your country as well as the company that you represent. So if you have any questions, you can write us basically in the comments. We will take the comments and we will send the questions to all of our speakers to answer for you. Now, before we get on with the show, guys, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Top Franchise, which is, by the way, the world's largest franchise catalog. So let's talk a little bit about this, you know, this company. First of all, what is our mission for this very conference? Number one, the mission of the conference is to transfer the very best practices of franchising between continents to provide you with the best tools for successful development. And of course, in this particular conference, we have two main focus for all of our speakers. Number one, how to create a strong global franchise network, and of course, how to choose the right franchise. Because guys, networking is our main value. That's what we care about a lot, which is why we have more than 5 million people from more than 150 countries who visit our marketplaces every year. That's right, guys, 5 million. That's a big number. And of course, every year, we give away more than almost 80,000 applications for franchises from all over the world. And that's right, more than about 1,000 customers trust us. Guys, there's a reason. We give you these numbers not to impress you, but to impress upon you the importance and the value of franchising. Because we believe that the top franchise investor database is more than a thousand, can you just imagine, 100,000 people. And our team has developed and brought about to market more than 400 franchises. So topfranchise.com, the company itself, has a large network of partners and experts in the United States of America, Europe, Africa, Southeast Asia, and of course, we're always open to expand our markets in new places. Dear friends, I'm actually here right now for you as the today's moderator and host of this conference. And of course, I would love to hear more about your comments. So if you have any comments, questions, please send them over. Just remember two things, your name, your company, and of course, the country that you are representing, because this is, of course, an international conference. And we will hopefully move on with further developments along the way. Now, guys, before we go any further, we have a lot of great speakers you know, basically planned for today's conference, and I personally cannot wait to meet them one by one and hear their amazing speeches that they will actually present for us based upon the schedule that we have planned for you. So once again, guys, I repeat, if you have any questions, please go to the comment section, leave your questions, and somehow your names, your company, as well as the nation that you represent in order for us to be able to hopefully ask those questions from our speakers. Very well. Now, before we get, in, uh, get ahead a little further, for all of our speakers, they're going to go ahead and tell you about a couple of things. Number one, they will tell you more about themselves and their personal history. Then they will actually talk more about their companies because all of these basically speakers represent very successful companies in terms of franchising. And more importantly, they will explain exactly what those franchises are. And of course, my first speaker uh, for this uh, conference is Albert Kong, basically. He's the uh, founder and CEO of Asia Wide Franchise Consultants from Singapore. And we just can't wait to see him, to actually ask him questions about how he is going to you know, t uh, tell us how to deal with the issue of franchising. So, Albert, are you with us right now? Hi, Daniel, and hi, hi everyone. Albert, yes, that's right. I'm always Finally, ready. That's <laughs> right. Of course, I was impressed because uh, you are the first speaker, obviously, and this means you have a lot of great ideas to share with us. So, first of all, uh, I want to actually ask you, Albert, to go ahead and tell us more about yourself your background, your company, so that actually our listeners know exactly who you are and what you stand for. Okay. So what you're saying is I don't start on the presentation proper, but just do a self-intro right now, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. Very quickly, uh, I've been doing franchise consulting for 33 years. I'm 66 this year. And in the last 33 years, uh, 
my team and I, we have uh, built uh, almost 1,400 franchise systems. We have helped a lot of franchisors from all over the world uh, find suitable franchisees. Uh, 28 years ago, which is five years after I started uh, doing franchise consulting, uh, through the Singapore Trade Development Board, which is a government body, we also publish Asia Franchise and Business Opportunities magazine. Mm -hmm. So this magazine is unique in the sense that uh, it is in English and in Mandarin, which is the common language uh, amongst the Chinese speaking people all over the world. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, what is also crazy about us is we go to 30 to 33 franchise and food shows all over Asia. You know, you see us even in, you know, uh, Paris and in London, uh, because we have also got the world's largest network of franchise consultants. Right now we have 80 people in um, 73 countries, and we're hoping to uh, expand this network so that more and more franchise companies can benefit from our, you know, a network of people who are locals, who know, you know, the so-called pastel, the political, economic, social, technology, and what have you kind of environment in their own countries. Yeah. So uh, with that, uh, I look forward to just uh, sharing with you my uh, presentation. And do Absolutely. feel free to yeah send me questions. Thank you. For, for sure. You can, uh, can get started, of course. And if there was any questions, I will let you know. Go ahead. All right. So I will start my uh, presentation. Okay, very good. Okay, are you able to see my presentation right now? Or is it on? Can you see? Okay, I assume that, uh, you know, you can see my presentation. Now, I'm, I've been told that I have only got 10 minutes, so I will be very quick. Sure. Uh, with my presentation, all right? That's so right. basically, I'm going to share with you the rising trends uh, in franchising, okay? Uh, now, very quickly, these are, you know, just things to, to tell you that franchising evolved, you know, just with the environment, you know, uh, in the world. So uh, there are seven points here, and I'll go through them one by one, all right? So one is ESG, which is the buzzword now, uh, all over the world, even the World Economic Forum talk about ESG, and even banks are talking about ESG. ESG basically stands for environmental, social, and governance, uh, which all boils down to this thing called sustainability. So if you are a franchisor and you don't, you know, you ignore the ESG factor, you will lose out. Okay, because the millennia and people who are educated, people who read, you know, uh, news will know that ESG is very important. All right. So this chart basically just tell you about the social responsibility score, mm -hmm. which is uh, which matters to the modern consumer nowadays and the banks and the governments. All right. So again, you can see even IKEA, which is franchising all over the world, they even go into forest management. This is just one example, all right, to show that they care about the environment, okay? Again, IKEA, uh, because it's such a famous brand, I use it again. They even go into buyback and resell program, again, to discourage people from wasteful consumerism, all right? And even this very famous uh, Havana uh, slippers, they have a recycling program. Again, they are into franchising. And more and more uh, fast food players, they also make sure that, you know, they go into uh, packaging materials and cups that are, you know, friendly to the environment. So these are examples. Even fashion, you know, you see, this is a famous uh, magazine called The Business of Fashion. Uh, they talk about, you know, uh, Generation Z people wanting to now buy fast fashion that has got sustainability in it, you know. So, you know, then words like recyclable, biodegradable, these are all buzzwords, okay. Even KFC, you know, they want to present themselves as caring, you know, about governance and social responsibility. They even have a mental well-being skills kind of foundation, right? This is in Australia, okay? And things like that. So second, more and more uh, 
maybe some people say because the cows, you know, let go too much air and it's, you know, the methane and it's bad for the environment. So plant-based food and veggie-centric foods are now all the rage. So, you know, even Yum China, they are into all sorts of veggie food, okay? And we all know Yum has KFC and Pizza Hut and Taco Bells and what have you. And Euro Monitor, which is, uh, you know, a very well uh, referred kind of consulting company, they're talking about plant-based alternatives and they have all sorts of reports to talk about, you know, uh, plant-based alternatives. Next point, reliance on technology and robots. Family Mart, which is a very uh, successful convenience store franchise all over Asia, you know, they use unmanned stores, uh, you know, no employees are needed. They use technology, you know. And I've got many clients in Asia, for example, Putian, which is a Chinese restaurant. They use robots as servers. Of course, uh, it is just a supplementary uh, kind of a thing because they still have uh, actual human beings as servers. But the robots help in the sense that, you know, Singapore laborers, uh, especially in the service industries, are hard to get and hard to retain. So the robots will help in that sense. And Jamba, which is also a franchise, they also have a robotic smoothie kiosk. So these are all trends. And, you know, in university towns, you know, a lot of pizza companies use robots to deliver, you know, to all the hungry freshmen and sophomores and, you know, juniors and seniors in varsities. Fourth, Ghost and cloud kitchens are all the rage too. You know, in Singapore, there's a company called Smart City Kitchens. They actually help people get into the food business by, you know, actually helping them set up, you know, uh, ghost kitchens, you know. So everything is ready. And then this entrepreneur to be or restaurateur to be actually can just go into business, but via a cloud kitchen concept. And of course, Fast Casual 800 Degrees, which is a famous pizza chain, they are in the ghost kitchens and they even have robotic pizza making kiosks, you know. So these are all the rage. Uh, and then uh, this multinational Nestle too, you know, they actually have Tiffin Labs, you know, to help people, uh, you know, to, to uh, operate F&B businesses, you know. Again, technology. And in Malaysia, there's this company, you know, that has got multiple brands all using the cloud kitchen concept, okay. And Corner Pizza, which is uh, also, uh, you know, this is in Manila. And even in hawker centers, which is like food courts in Singapore, there are people who actually have uh, alternative brands within their own store, but, you know, using the uh, cloud kitchen or shack kitchen, you know, or social kitchen kind of concept. Then the fifth point is uh, consumers' expectations of convenience, safety, and traceability. You know, I'm sure all of us know that Taco Bell uh, has got this double-decker drive through You know, uh, again, I think right now everybody knows that in America, uh, labor shortage is a big problem. So technology and more importantly, you know, people want to be safe. So, you know, as contactless as possible, you know, no thanks to the virus that is raging all over the world. I mean, thank God the situation is getting better uh, the, the virus, uh, this Omicron one seems not to be so deadly. Thank God for that. Okay. And of course, in Korea, even Dunkin' Donuts, you know, uh, da, da, da. When, when hygiene is a problem, you know, you can't escape. Everybody's on their, you know, on their phone and everybody knows. So you really, really need to be very careful about, you know, how, you know, you handle food. Yeah. Uh, next, brand extensions, ready-to-eat meals. Again, using Yum as an example, you know, uh, like I said, Yum China, you know, they have Pizza Hut and all. But you know what? Pizza Hut in China actually even sells steak, you know, and people can just uh, buy it and then they can put it at home and then, you know, it's ready to eat. Yeah. And they are also working with the Italian coffee maker, La Vazza, you know, uh, and, and helping... Uh, People open up uh, cafes easily. Yeah. Now this is another uh, 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven, as we know, is a convenience store, but they are doing all sorts of ready-to-eat meals. Again, I think it's a reflection of trends all over the world. People want convenience. You know, uh, 
you know, people just want to grab something and then be able to, you know, eat it or, or bring it home, heat it up and then eat it, you know, uh, so they save time and all. Then brand extension, I mean, all of us know that in New York, there's this really famous bakery called Magnolia Bakery. They are very clever. They know that the consumers now, a lot of them are working from home, you know, but when they're on Zoom, they want to look presentable, but they want to be comfortable. So Magnolia Bakery has even gone into loungewear, you know, you look at the tracksuit, which is quite presentable and hip looking, you know, and they sell them, yeah. So this is uh, being, uh, you know, observant and knowing how to write on trends, yeah. And, uh, and uh, the very famous Old Town White Coffee in uh, Malaysia, they are franchising all over Asia. They even come up with express outlets because, you know, they think that uh, it was help them save rental. And again, because labor is hard. Nowadays, and you know, uh, I think all of us know that there's this thing called the Great Resignation uh, in 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 America, and a lot of people because uh, you know d during the non-pandemic days they, they work in different countries, and then when they go back to the hometown, now they can't get out. So labor is a huge challenge all over the world. So uh, you know, companies have to come up with smaller size outlets so that they don't have to re rely too much on labor. Yeah, and then even Subway, they have uh, gone into vending machines, contactless, and no need to depend on labor, right? And then the seventh concept is actually a uh, new concept, new players, like this one, Blank Street, you know, uh, it's not really a new kind of uh, uh, concept. They are like a 7-Eleven, but they take food from different people and then, you know, they are in this little uh, kiosk and then that looks really nice and then they sell stuff, right? So uh, just just capitalize on, on what people want, you know, that, you know, people want fast, people want uh, options, you know, and uh, if, if you come across as, uh, you know, uh, being very innovative, that will attract new customers too, yeah? And we, we talk about resurrected old concepts. I think a lot of people know people like uh, Charlie Brown or concepts like Charlie Brown Cafe or Hello Kitty Cafe. Uh, in Singapore, they have failed, but there will always be new people wanting to resuscitate it, resurrect it because they think it's very cute. They think that uh, they will always be, you know, uh, or, or they can do it better, you know. So with that, I'll stop. I think uh, basically what I've tried to share with you is that, you know, uh, it will revolve. You, you, you always have to look at the situation and say, okay, what do the consumers want, you know, and how can I meet those ones? And so uh, I tell all my clients all over the world in these 33 years, always take care of the basics. Make sure your product is, or your service is, you know, something that people want. Make sure your pricing is right. If you are more expensive, you you know, you must know the reason and you are convincing. Make sure you promote it correctly without offending people's religion or race or, you know, whatever. And then make sure your distribution channels are right. You know, make use of social media. Make sure that you think of all sorts of ways to get your product or service to the consumer. Other piece will be packaging. Again, remember, I talk about ESG you know, environment and things like that. Make sure your people, another P, have passion. Make sure they are responsible. Make sure, you know, they, 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 they communicate correctly, you know. So with that, I stop and uh, please feel free to send me questions. Thank you very much. Questions? All right. So first of all, it's good to be here with you. Thank you very much for your speech. So far, we haven't uh, received a uh, spe uh, basically question from our uh, basically viewers. So far, we've had a couple of uh, our viewers from different countries. And uh, basically, we have them. Uh, we have ready-made stores from the UK. And we have Nadi Nazir from Pakistan, of course. We have the Blessing Pitaway from Nigeria. So first of all, I want to thank you so much, Albert, for your uh, amazing speech. Of course, it's an honor to meet you uh, for the first time, and I really enjoyed your presentation. So far, there have been no questions because I'm guessing it was so clear that everyone just got the, you know, 
the point right away. And it was so clear that everybody actually understood it. So thank you very much thank you. for your presentation. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Timely, thank you. Uh, manner basically right, thank was you. pretty good. And I wish you the very best. We're going to move on hopefully to our next speaker. So have a good one. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Now I'll move on to our next speaker of the show. Uh, his name is Pavel Antonov. He's the project manager of ID World from Russia. And he's here to tell us about the next franchise that he's working on. So I'd like to now move on to you, Pavel Antonov. Do you actually hear us? Yeah, I hear you. Hello, Fantastic. everyone. So, uh, pleasure meeting you, you Pavel. Uh, for the first time again, it's glad to have you here with us to share with us basically your uh, uh, presentation. You can just go for a very brief introduction for, for our basically audience before moving on to the next presentation. Okay. So. All you... right. Would you like to tell us a bit more about your background, your company, very briefly, and then ah, okay, hopefully going okay. for the uh, basically presentation? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks all. Uh, my name is Pavel, as you say, and <laughs> I'm glad to see all the participants. Uh, I am the project manager of ID World company. We are from Eastern Europe, from Russia, based in Russia. Mm. First of all, I want to say that we are very pleased to participate in a global, such global and this interesting uh, online event. I think that meetings like this are very helpful for all attenders and viewers. So a few words about our company. Just a moment, I'll share the screen. Do you see? So, okay. Uh, our brand name, ID World. We found it as a private company in 2010. All those periods from the start to present days, we work as an IT company which uh, develops and embeds software solutions for remote identification of customers, a wide range of businesses. Among them are telecommunication, hotels, fairs, banking, medical organization, and other areas. Today, we're an active grown up company, a resident of the Russian Information Technology Cluster of the Skolkov Foundation. So, we already have partners not only in Russia, but uh, from the other countries too. This gives us an idea uh, to make a franchise. So, with Felix David mentoring and help, uh, we did it. Thanks him very much. Uh, as I told, Earlier, there are different uh, kinds of our solutions which are packaged in our franchise with the main idea. Our solutions are um, allow partners uh, for our franchises um, remotely attract new clients without opening new offices or with a minimal employee participation. If talking about who can be uh, the franchises and more about solutions, uh, the franchises. Uh, give possibility to uh, the franchises give possibility to franchises uh, to connect a ready-made software platform, uh, which is made for remote contract signing, customer identification, and activation of, of seller services. By using our solution, uh, different kind, uh, different kind of businesses uh, can attract new clients from all over the world. Uh, we launched our franchise at the end of the. 2021 and of course we are ready to partnership relations all over the world by the way we um, already uh, get uh, interest not only from countries uh, like in usa or canada or some countries from west europe but uh, we get interest from ghana uh, nigeria and some countries of south africa it seems that uh, our platform and our solutions are good for all countries on, and all type of businesses. Access to ID World software product is provided in client server format. Corporate partners uh, connect to the platforms can start using the product uh, immediately without wasting time installing software and with minimal time spent of staff training. Uh, two of our solutions, ID Link uh, and ID Abonnent, 
ID Link and the ID Abonnent are focuses on mobile operator processes during their customer identification and activation SIM cards and eSIMs. Uh, two others, uh, uh, ID Client and ID Guest, uh, good for uh, good for uh, companies in the sales of goods uh, and services that require personal uh, identification, such as telemedicine, banking, tourism, hotels, fairs, fitness industry, uh, selling goods with a confirmation maybe of age qualification, etc. So uh, I want to share you uh, um, for clarity. Uh, I want to show how one of our solution works. Uh, it's, names, uh, it's named Idea uh, and it will, will give, um, it will give uh, you a clear to understand quality of our services. Just a moment, the next uh, share screen. So uh, let's imagine uh, that some mobile operator uh, in some country wants to expand uh, its business to get more clients. Uh, and uh, so uh, it decided to sell SIM cards, not only through the Q's traditional sales, but um, you know, like uh, mobile operator offices or something like this, but in some new points of sales. It could be retail uh, shops like IKEA, uh, as uh, Albert Kong uh, talked about <laughs> before, Metro Cash and Carry, uh, 7 Eleven, and many others, uh, which aren't sell seems card before. Uh, here we have some rules. Uh, up to customer buying the SIM card uh, in most of countries, uh, he need to visit the mobile operator office or maybe mm, uh, some center of identification for verification him as a subscriber and activation SIM card. But here our idea by name uh, starts at work. Mm, so customer just need to download our free uh, our free um, solution from App Store or Google Play. Here's in the first step uh, is the named idea by name. Then uh, scan uh, his uh, barcode from the uh, SIM card, which he is, was by in the uh, store. On the next step, uh, on the next step, he uh, just need to uh, go through the identification process. Uh, on this, uh, on this part, uh, in, the th in the third step, uh, he have to uh, check, uh, our solution have to check that it is a real person, not a robot or photo. So like a check for humanity. So our solution ask uh, to the customer, uh, wink or turn head left, right. And so during this process, he do some photos. And then uh, after uh, in the four steps uh, after uh, scanning IDs, uh, our solution check that is a uh, photo for photo from passport or from ID is the same as a photo from the camera, which is uh, uh, read it uh, during the humanity test. So, and uh, it's checked with uh, some person, how many persons it is the same much. Uh, then um, all the, the scan is data from IDs, uh, put it into the, uh, the screen uh, in the first steps, uh, in the fifth step. And so uh, customer check that it is uh, all correct and push continue. Then in some countries, uh, there is a needed information for uh, scan passport information of the registration or address. Uh, the next screen, it is a read for the uh, mobile operator agreement. And uh, for after carefully reading, uh, customer uh, push the continue. And in the last screen, uh, he put uh, his signature by the finger on the uh, mobile uh, phone screen. So this signature is uh, uh, after that put into the agreement and send it to the uh, customer. And after these few steps, uh, 
SIM cards will be activated and uh, agreement will be sent to the uh, to the customer. So uh, after that, mobile operator uh, get the new subscriber uh, without his visiting his office uh, or maybe some center of identification. Uh, but customers uh, with the, these few steps um, uh, do it from his home, uh, remote identification and activation his SIM card. So very nice. Very nice and great, uh, basically performance, truly amazing. And we enjoyed learning about this process. I mean, the whole thing, just so seamless, going through the documents, scan it, send it, you know, send your basically signature. It was a pretty great way to go through the whole process. And I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Pavel, for your presentation. Uh, definitely very useful. And hopefully we look forward to seeing you more in our future conferences. Thank you. Wish you the very best. In the meantime, I'd like to say hello to uh, basically, Mr. Bacchus, uh, basically. And of course, we have, uh, as always, uh, new guests. The, the next one is, of course, ILM, uh, basically, from uh, basically Islamabad, Pakistan, uh, of Sal Malik. And of course, uh, yes, uh, you showed your interest about starting a new franchise for apparels uh, from Russia. Very nice. Now, my next speaker, obviously, is going to be uh, Ryan Russell the founder and CEO of Myanmar Business Answers from Bangkok. So Ryan, do you hear us? Yes, I can. How are you guys doing? Fantastic, Ryan. So it's a pleasure to have you with us, basically. If it's uh, possible, go ahead and uh, tell us more about yourself and then we can move on swiftly to your presentation. Sure, um, I'm gonna share my screen right away so you guys can just see, uh, see that. So let me see here, I can do that. Um, so uh, I, I actually um, am doing double duty right now with work. Um, I owned a consulting company uh, for over 10 years, uh, Myanmar Business Answers, uh, and I was based in Myanmar, uh, Yangon, Myanmar, uh, since uh, 2010. And currently I work for a law firm as operation director um, that is based in the U.S. doing securities law. So I'm going to tell you just a little bit about that, my experiences. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur. I've started a number of businesses, including uh, consulting, business services, uh, tourism, and um, have always been uh, very interested in franchising as well. Um, I, uh, as I said, I've been in the region for uh, over 11 years and uh, been and doing different various uh, business services. And um, since uh, the last few years, I've been working in Myanmar, uh, working with World Franchise Associates, which is another franchise organization, and supported a number of franchises there, uh, entering uh, uh, different uh, foreign franchises, as well as helping develop local franchises in Myanmar. And recently, just a little about, about a year ago, I've moved to Thailand um, uh, because of the situation in Myanmar. Uh, and uh, started working for this uh, uh, this law firm as well. And so uh, I'm looking forward to working with top franchises in Southeast Asia, especially in Thailand. Um, and I can also help anybody with regards to any work in Thailand and Myanmar um, because of my experience there. Um, with, the, with the corporate services uh, for, for um, the law firm, um, uh, we basically deal with securities and uh, we do basically everything. So if you have anything in regard to doing a franchise in the U.S., uh, we might be able to help you do that as well. Um, but anything in terms of investment, um, even cryptocurrencies and stuff like that. Um, you are welcome to contact me anytime um, on WhatsApp um, or you can email me uh, at my two different email addresses, mirrorbusinessmanager.com and plainsteenlawfirm.com. Um, but happy to talk to anybody about franchising. Uh, I really love um, to look at different markets, look at different opportunities, and to share with uh, business owners what the opportunities are to expand their, their businesses uh, in different markets as well. And so um, if anybody has any questions regarding Myanmar, uh, Thailand, I don't know 
how much time there is. I try to go fast so there, if anybody wanted to ask a couple of questions, they can. Well, you still got some time if you want to continue, basically. Uh, as of now, there are no questions, but you can actually move on. If you have a couple of minutes, if you would like to, uh, you know, somehow round it up and uh, end your presentation. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, just in short, uh, we are focused in Bangkok. Um, uh, we can look at different uh, markets here in, in Thailand, Chiang Mai, Bangkok. There are a number of uh, franchises that have, have entered in the last couple of years that have done quite well. Um, I know there's a lot of um, fast casual food uh, that's kind of taken off in Southeast Asia as well. And then um, different uh, different things in Myanmar, we've seen that coffee's done quite well, coffee franchises, mostly Southeast Asian uh, brands. Um, we've seen some uh, US brands come in uh, but there, there, there are a lot of opportunities, even still in Myanmar, there's some opportunities, um, to, to launch something there as well. So yeah, just feel free to contact me, uh, through, uh, top franchises, or you can contact me directly. Thanks. Great job, Ryan. Thank you very much for your presentation. And of course, it's always a pleasure to talk to an expat who's really done a great job of settling in a new country and starting a business, you know, from the scratch. So it's a pleasure to have you with us. And we will definitely contact you in case there are any questions. Uh, we'll Thanks. like to also uh, hello to uh, basically Connects uh, Shalangwe from uh, Africa, Malawi. And obviously, we are going to now move on to our next uh, basically speaker of the conference. Uh, his name is uh, Felix De Witt from Netherlands, and he's the ex master franchisee of the estate agency's Remax. So, uh, Felix, are you with us? Uh, I think you're, you have to turn on the, yeah, that's right. Now we can hear as well. Hey, How are you doing, sir? Hey, nice to meet you. The pleasure is uh, ours to have you with us. So why don't you go ahead right now and tell us more about yourself. And of course, you can move on straight to your presentation. Yes, let me do, let me share it. Uh, one moment. I think you got it now. Hello. Sure. You can go ahead. You can go ahead. Everything is uh, here. We can see it, and you can go ahead and begin your presentation. Okay. My name is uh, Felix De Witt. I'm uh, from uh, the Netherlands. I started my first life as an officer in the Royal Dutch Army. Afterwards, I was a real estate agent, but this business was actually too small for me. So I decided in 1998 to buy the master franchise of an international real estate brand named Remax from the USA. And uh, I sold my company in uh, 2009 and I started a new company and I'm supporting uh, franchisors uh, globally to develop their brand for uh, the rest of the world. And I have uh, around 25 years of experience right now. This was the brand uh, I was really successful with. I sold more than uh, 150 uh, franchises in uh, less than 10 years. And why did I start Remax? I wanted to change the real estate industry in my life and the opportunity to build something for myself, but not by myself. That's always the advantage of a franchise. You are not doing it uh, only by yourself, but you can support with other franchises. And I'm a winner as a person, and I always like to join the best. I just told you uh, we did an incredible uh, job with our team uh, building uh, uh, a network of uh, 122 offices in a couple of, in less than 10 years. And in 2008, 2009, we get at that time uh, the crisis. So we had to change some things in the company. My existing company is a company that is uh, building, uh, that is supporting franchisors to develop their brand. And my statement is always to build a big business you need a small focus. And I made as a master franchisee, I made the huge mistakes. The most important, I want to do everything by myself. Um, and I did not uh, uh, support, uh, I did not use the support from experts uh, to help me. And that was a huge mistake. A good franchise organization is, uh, we are now actually in, in, in a COVID crisis and pandemic all over the world. And I always see uh, some advantages out of it. 
And actually a good franchise organization is just like a virus, but then in a positive sense. Someone gets infected, then it affects the other, and everyone does their job well, then the transmission goes very fast, and your franchise becomes a treat to the competition. Uh, actually, the pandemic uh, crisis uh, was really terrible and still is terrible in Europe, but uh, the infections are increasing, but the people in the hospital are dropping down. That's the reason most of the governments are changing their policy right now. We had uh, more than 114 million uh, infections in, uh, in Europe. When we go to uh, my country, for example, uh, we uh, had a lockdown till uh, actually today, last night, our government uh, introduced that they will end the full lockdown, but they only open the restaurants that were closed for the last 10 months. They open it till 10 in the evening. Things are changing, uh, businesses are changing. There were some industries that were very tough. The food and beverage industry had a really tough time. But as my favorite soccer player, Johan Cruyff, always says, every disadvantage has advantages. Also in this pandemic, the, in the situation in the franchise tree will be booming again. Europe has one of the most developed franchise industries of the world. And many franchisors expand their brand uh, by recruiting masters. We have around 1,500 franchise systems in Europe. And what I see, uh, Europe is rated an outstanding market for expansion for different brands right now. And you have to realize that the franchise is around 5% of the GDP in Europe. And uh, since COVID-19 in 2020, we had an economic uh, down there going and it's coming back right now. Um, the development of franchise in 2022, how I see it, the market for new franchise development around Europe will remain robust and strong. There are excellent reasons to start a business during a down economy. Existing companies, that's what I see right now in Europe, will franchise their business. And I think this is the right time to, uh, to expand to this uh, incredible, great, continent what is a really healthy continent business-wise on an economic stage it's a great time for entrepreneurs uh, dream now and smart investors will always make money not excuses that i see as a development in this year the reasons to start a business during a down economy uh, the materials and goods are much cheaper the numbers of competitors uh, are going down it's always a disadvantage that after a crisis, a lot of companies won't survive. And business people are looking for new opportunities. When we get another crisis in the future, then it's always be much better uh, joining a franchise than not. When I was in the real estate, I saw exactly the same. When I was not joining Remax at that time, my company should be in really tr uh, troubles with uh, a down going market. People are always looking for innovations, just like it is uh, going uh, right now in, uh, in this uh, uh, new uh, world that we live in at the moment. Mm -hmm. Existing companies uh, will franchise their business because of lower cost, simpler management, a faster expansion, less recruitment. It's always different uh, to recruit in this uh, period, and there's a lot of international potential. How to expand your franchise globally? Don't make the same mistake I make. Use uh, uh, companies that can support you in the legalization of your franchise to make good franchise agreements that are approved by franchise law and franchise operations manual. Take care for the registration of your intellectual property in the World Intellectual Property Organization. Know how to sell your franchises. Take care for training for your franchisees. Screen your franchisees. They are walking around with your brand. Take care that they don't damage your brand. So be focused on the opportunities you have as a franchisor. Support them and focus on your market share. 
follow these uh, brands in uh, 21 uh, together with topfranchise.com uh, i supported uh, these companies uh, they made uh, i think the right decision to expand their brand to uh, to this continent in uh, europe so uh, stay focused to build a big business you need a small focus. The pandemic won't change the franchise industry. It will open closed door for you as a franchisor. And, but you have to take care as a franchisor that you have to take care for your most important asset and that are your existing franchises. The right time for your franchise to expand to Europe is now. When you have some questions, scan this code, you get my ego business card and uh, you uh, i can uh, tell you much more uh how you can uh, how you can expand your business to uh, to this incredible beautiful continent very nice and i would like to uh basically thank you very much for your performance felix uh great one yeah they say one man's uh nightmare is another man's dream right i guess in down economies you can still make a lot of profit and the way you describe it actually shows that we could uh, indeed benefit from such uh, crises and not be basically crushed by them. So thank you very much for your performance, uh, very solid. And of course, if there are any questions, we will definitely contact you. And please leave your contacts for our viewers after your performance to so actually be in touch with you as well as our viewers. Thank you very much for that. And of course, I would like to say, uh, basically, uh, I, I would like to actually, uh, Center regards to our, a couple of our new guests today. Basically, first one goes to Chakrader Majetti, uh, basically uh, from the new MEP Center, Vocational Training Center of India. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And obviously, we have the uh, basically uh, Nadim Nazir uh, with us again. Uh, we'd like to thank you very much for your comments. So, for all of you who are now uh, currently watching us, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave this with us and we'll share those with the speakers. And later on, perhaps we'll even contact you directly to answer all of your questions. Now, I'm going to move on to our next uh, speaker of the show. Uh, his name is Stanislav uh, Nikulin. He's the head of the International Performance Marketing Department, Algorithmica, and he's here to tell us what exactly is going to happen. So, first of all, it's good to have you with us right now. Stanislav, do you hear us well? Yes. Do you hear me well? Absolutely. So why don't right. you go ahead right now, tell our listeners and viewers a bit about yourself and then move straight to your presentation. All right. So uh, thanks uh, for the intro. Uh, my name is Stanislav. Uh, I am currently uh, head of digital and international franchise department at Algorithmics Global. Uh, Algorithmics uh, Global uh, is a branch of Algorithmica. Uh, company which uh, doing the international expansion uh, mostly and predominantly just via franchise model. So uh, up to this time, Algorithmics has expanded to more than 65 countries um, and that's uh, and has acquired more than, uh, well, Hundreds of offices, hundreds of offices, and uh, more than 300 of partners all over the world. So let's uh, take a look of uh, let's take a look at what we got for the year of 2021. Let's draw some, uh, let's say, not just nice results and nice conclusions. And I'm excited to share with the audience uh, these ones. So are you able to actually to actually see the slides in the full screen right now or not? I guess not. So let me do it this way. Uh, please let me know anyone. Are you able to see the slide like the full screen and my face somewhere? So if, if everything's correct, we will proceed with this. Absolutely. It's all good. You can go ahead. Great. Thanks. So Algorithmics basically is an, an ed tech uh, school, uh, which uh, provides the, the main its product is uh, the uh, programming school for kids of uh, 
middle, uh, early, and just let's say junior ages. So it is international, obviously. Uh, it is expanding rapidly, and it is uh, it is based on a high quality, let's say, software inside, high quality platform, and a great methodology uh, which is surrounding this platform. And it is uh, algorithmics is uh, let's say outstanding. Uh, what's about so special about algorithmics is uh, ex outstanding support of franchisee partners, which they get from algorithmics after they are on board. So the algorithmics uh, courses, uh, let's say, focuses on developing the key skills of uh, the 21st century for the kids. And now that's uh, that's how just approximately the map looks, but the map also uh, just permanently lags from uh, how much offices are open or are being opened all over the world. So it's now more than 55 countries, more than 300 uh, and thousand students, and yeah, correct, more than 300 franchisee partners. Uh, well, the product behind the franchise uh, is, uh, I guess, is, is uh, very nice to be resold or acquired by franchisees because uh, also algorithm focuses strongly on methodology and on the software which allows to conduct everything smoothly and very, very, very in a nice and easy, productive way. The courses, uh, the curriculum, the curriculum and methodology inside is very, very well prepared and it is uh, i don't know uh, maybe maybe so maybe some that might have heard of algorithms doesn't know that this algorithmic curriculum curriculum is uh, used by governments of some countries just to be implemented inside the whole educational system inside this uh, there is a broad range of the courses but they are mostly focused on programming uh, our once again we have this our algorithm has inside this award learning award winning uh, learning management platform lms which uh, provides the window for students for teachers uh, for franchisee partner itself to manage their own uh, their own main uh, figures and kpis uh, let's not dig into this uh, once again uh, platform just now but needless to say that it is it is, uh, let's say, very competitive, very up to date, and great in usage and in its performance. Uh, what's about? Uh, let's talk a bit more just about the franchise package itself. Uh, so it takes around, let's say, six weeks to launch just from the beginning, uh, just from the start of the idea that franchisee is ready to to open the school to uh, actually starting a uh, school in a new city. Uh, it operates both offline and online, but let's say historically, algorithmic school is some uh, offline entity, which, uh, which, uh, which uses, let's say, some real life uh, piece of property some real life uh, teachers and students who would came there, who could come there online. Uh, let's say average, uh, very, very, very variable, uh, but let's say robust uh, estimation of ROI is less than one year. And the fee to enter, actually, the average fee, the lump sum is around $400, depends on the territory much. And the, the, the whole sum to start and to begin with uh, uh, during during the course of the first year is around fifteen thousand dollars, but once again it depends on territory much. Uh, Why lump sum is four, and the sum uh, to begin is this one. Well, this uh, these are uh, those costs that should be somehow taken by the franchisee to make the business operate. Besides the lump sum, so this is these are some marketing costs and some operational costs just to conduct and, and develop the business. Well, so yeah. It is great, the platform is great, the methodology is great, the support is ex extensive, but the development of the franchisee uh, and the acquiring of the students doesn't happen, let's say, 
just by itself. So we assume that there are some investments and you know, like in average, if we sum the lump sum and we sum the investment and the operational cost, uh, we got something uh, as uh, $15,000 to start, uh, so for minimum for the first year, to, to spend during the first year. Uh, full cycle support, uh, business mentors are great. They are doing great just right from the start and then to the development. Algorithmics has uh, a distinct, a separate group of mentors who uh, helps uh, partners to get on board and who helps them just to start. It is it's called uh, literally the group start. Start helps with acquiring the first students, with uh, setting up all the uh, all the stuff uh, needed for marketing, uh, everything needed for actually establishing the courses and actually to do a start. When, let's say, the, the partner is on board and partner is uh, going well, uh, he's transferred to the mentors who are doing the development, do the strategic development that helps to proceed further. Uh, business mentors are uh, just a brilliant, uh, brilliant part of this uh, the whole process so some uh, some partners might have uh, some doubts before they start how could they proceed how could they uh, handle this or that mentors helps with much of this and helps much uh, the courses uh, are for those who might be somehow uh, uh, have some knowledge in the, the courses are like this and this is the distribution of the courses uh, between the years of age uh, of the kids who are to be acquired on these courses. Uh, franchise models, uh, the most, let's say, uh, common are the local franchise starting from literally one district in, uh, uh, in some city or regional franchise. Uh, it, the region, the size of the region may depends from city, town, area, district, and to, to the whole, uh, to the whole uh, country, to the whole country uh, master franchise. Uh, since, yeah. uh, so what, what about the franchise package? And uh, obviously, as I told before, it is, just, it is, it, it is, uh, let's say, almost autopilot and almost very very well set up uh, a business plan with uh, support and teacher training inside and with technology for marketing and sales including crm and including uh, the learning uh, platform itself inside uh, so the the process of uh, establishing and starting is uh, quite simple uh, the partner is about to research its own territory, research its own competitors in the territory, to count some financial models, uh, to be qualified by the franchise committee, to be approved to, to start, and then to uh, sign actually uh, some agreement and, and to begin with, to pay the one sum and, and to start with it. So let me just uh, show for one more minute the actual map of the, of the algorithmics uh, of the algorithmics actual uh, development during this uh, during just the year of 2021. So in the course of the year 2021, these are the new territories that has joined algorithmics just in the previous 12 months. Uh, literally, it uh, spreads from almost from like the western the western coast of the North America uh, to the New Zealand. So it's uh, Canada, US, uh, says franchise, few partners and uh, much more districts in, inside Canada, a uh, few partners in Mexico and more district inside the Mexico, uh, much uh, new partners in Ecuador, a uh, few more, more partners in Colombia, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, Costa Rica, yeah, Mexico. Uh, some new partners, few partners in Chile, as you see, like with this uh, few, uh, I say, few districts of Santiago, Chile. And we can go along with this and collect this 100 uh, new partners that has new territories that could join algorithmics. Most of these partners are new, but some of these territories were bought additionally 
uh, by the partners who has joined algorithmics previously. Uh, and this that, that's actually the map of uh, the of the spreading of uh, the year 2021. Um, it uh, it it works well in different regions. It works well at least on two main languages on uh, English and Spanish. It is trans it is to be translated for some languages locally when it is required and it is uh, translated to you know much of the courses are translated to some local languages. For example, we have uh, some German translations, we have some translations for Swiss partners. And we have, for example, landing pages for Arab countries on Arabic. Uh, and yeah, so it is actually global uh, and literally uh, spread from uh, spread all over the world. So that's uh, the main, uh, that's probably the main things about algorithms franchise in the year 2021. Thank you for your attention. And you're welcome with the question that you're asking. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate your presentation. Uh, so far, there have been no questions, but it was quite clear and it's uh, obviously elaborate to see how education can be spread worldwide using your platform. So thank you very much. And now I'm going to move on to Vasil Gazulin, the founder of topfranchise.com. Vasil, it's a pleasure to have you now with us. So how are you doing? And I'd like to actually go ahead and uh, take up with your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, so please confirm that uh, it's a good sound uh, from me. Uh, and uh, of course, yes, uh, we hear you fine. And of course, the sound is uh, pretty clear. You can go ahead and begin with your presentation. Yes, yes, uh, I will be out of the presentation. Uh, just uh, let me know uh, that uh, it's clear that you can see me. <laughs> yeah, I, yes, I, yes, I, I hear stay. you fine. And yes, we see good. you fine as well. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm really so excited to uh, speak, uh, to be a speaker on this conference because I know that uh, there are people from all over the world and uh, I'm really happy to represent our marketplace topfranchise.com here and uh, uh, say a few words uh, to support of all people who is now uh, feel sickness of the COVID and uh, cannot do their business and uh, to say a few words of support all franchise industry uh, to be strong and uh, stay healthy uh, because of these uh, hard times uh, of the uh, doing this uh, business in the COVID uh, and in the lockdown um, conditions, it's very hard. But anyway, uh, we are happy to uh, represent our uh, marketplace here. And it, it is a good opportunity to promote your franchise uh, online because I know that many of uh, uh, international offline exhibitions now for lack of the audience and uh, they feel lack of uh, the people who is coming and in that case uh, I am happy to uh, uh, to introduce our marketplace and to say that uh, we have a very good conditions to promote your franchise right now and uh, also uh, I would like to say the few words that uh, we have a good news that uh, the governments of the countries, uh, they are uh, making support to promote their own franchise concept uh, to go to the global markets. And I have a very good uh, example now uh, that, uh, uh, for example, in uh, Russia, in a country where we also operate, uh, the Russian government and uh, the Russian export center, they're supporting their local franchise uh, companies who is doing business uh, locally to go global to and support them to be on our marketplace this example uh it's uh, uh, proof that idea that our governments the each country they will have speakers and the audience from they are ready to support their franchise and to promote their franchise companies on our marketplace. So this is a kind of instruction that I want to say to give you. Uh, I'm speaking to the leaders and to owners and the founders and the directors of the, their franchise brands that you should uh, apply for the support uh, conditions and uh, for this support from your governments. And uh, for example, we uh, used to be on the, uh, the biggest show in uh, Europe in uh, France, in Paris, the next show will be on the 20 to 23rd of March. And we have a booth of the top franchise there. And uh, there would be the country booths, the country pavilions. So I just 
just want to share with you idea that you should go to your government organizations who is supporting uh, uh, promoting the export of, from their countries, from your countries, and apply for this uh, uh, conditions that you be can be on the offline exhibitions and also you can be on the uh, country pavilion on our marketplace topfranchise.com and uh, uh, to promote start promoting your franchise with a zero cost because the this uh, government policies they usually uh, allow to pay uh, by the government facilities so this is my idea we feel this uh, 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 that it's happened uh, last year, the 21, and the next year, this is also the uh, kind of future of the promoting your franchise companies. Each country has these uh, uh, organizations, and uh, this is uh, maybe like kind of life hack that I give you to promote your franchise offline on the global show of franchise and online also. So this is my pleasure to talk to you, and uh, uh, for my opinion of the country that... Uh, uh, we have now that's uh, uh, the new concept of the franchise promotion on this year will be on the promoting the small businesses because, for example, in Russia, the Russian export center, they're supporting even the small companies who has a few uh, representatives by their own and also franchise. A uh, few franchisee, but they are ready to go global. And in that case, I just happy to say the few cases that uh, we have on our marketplace. It's a, a company who is uh, making correction of the uh, language of the young people. It's Gavarusha and also the company ID World, the IT company who is going global, and uh, also the beauty. Uh, uh, concept that is sugar and wax. Uh, also, this this uh, company is uh, uh, going global with their brands, and uh, they go in very small cities in the small locations, specifically, uh, especially in Russia. So, also, it's the kind of the manufacture of the uh, uh, jewelry. It's a Sloan Vish. And uh, uh, this is the one of kind of trend that we see that uh, even the small company with the small business go global with uh, online facilities like our topfranchise.com. So even if you are going to develop your franchise and you are still small company, uh, no matter, please go ahead and uh, develop your franchise, promote your franchise, especially on our global marketplace. So uh, that is all. Uh, I, I just, uh, I'm really happy that uh, uh, I can um, uh, be on this conference. Uh, I'm really uh, happy that we have a so big audience from all over the world. I want to say thank you to our organizers, to our speakers, and uh, to Daniel also especially. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Please go to our marketplace and uh, let's develop together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Truly appreciate it, Ms. Steele. Uh, top franchises on the rise, and it's all because of your leadership. So we appreciate your message, and it was indeed a pleasure to hear your words. Thank you very much. I'll move on now to our next speaker, which is Radu Lupus, uh, the co-founder of Salad Box from Romania. So, uh, Radu, are you with us right now? And if you are there, please go ahead. And it's a pleasure to have you with us. Go ahead and introduce yourself in the company and you can go right away and start your presentation. So hello everyone. Uh, everything is okay with the sound? Yes? Absolutely, everything is fine. You can Thank go you. Ahead. So I'm not going to have a PowerPoint presentation. I'm gonna talk with you like from entrepreneur to entrepreneur. So first of all, thank you very much topfranchise.com for inviting me to speak here. Uh, I might say that right now in the room behind me, it's our franchisee from Russia, from Moscow. So we're going to have uh, two locations with salad box there in Moscow opening in April, if everything is okay. So we are a global uh, franchise, uh, actually a gro global group of franchises. We have over 10 brands in the QSR service. We own restaurants, coffee, sweets, Japanese food. All these brands were creating and launched from uh, Romania. We are today present in around 15 countries, uh, especially in Europe, but we have also locations in North America, North Africa, and we are aiming for 2022 to enter in the Middle East. Uh, we do business in Russia already, uh, which I consider the, one of the biggest challenges, and we succeed to achieve it. Uh, I would like to share with you a little bit about the last two years and about what I see that is coming in the next year now. 
Uh, I want to talk a little bit about people, about employees. And I observe that people now need guidance. This period, in this period, people and employees need guidance. Managers need guidance. Suppliers need guidance because they do not know how to react directly to what is happening. It's been a big, a big change. 2020, 2021 came with a lot of traps. So now, as the entrepreneurs, the developers, we need to guide these persons. Uh, I would like to uh, share with you a reality. If in 2016, 17, 18, 19, I used to have a big team for the sales department. This is how we managed to sell franchises uh, in 15 countries and to have around 150, 160 restaurants now in the, in the network is that I had an internal team. Uh, now these things cannot work any longer. And my advice is to apply to specialists. Now, when comes the exit from this pandemic period, everybody, everybody needs to become professional in his uh, acting, in his direction. So I totally co and completely changed the direction of how I will promote my uh, business internationally, internationally. And I will not even force my departments to reinvent things now after the pandemic. I will apply to specialists. What is their job is daily, 10 hours a day, just to invent methods, how to sell and how to, uh, how to develop. So I would, I would advise you to a little bit give away from what you are doing now internally. And now is the moment to apply for the, for the specialist. I would say also that, uh, let's say if in 2020, uh, we were all saying that worst moments are going to come before starting to being good i would say that now in 2022 is the first time when we can say that it will just be better and better from now on i honestly don't believe uh, that uh, things are going to go to, to go down from now on things are going just to just to go up uh, we have observed internally in our lead generation system around the world that more and more people are interested in our franchisees uh, of course, they don't decide directly to visit our uh, country or to visit our locations, but at least they are starting to request information. This shows that things are going and are, are, are on a very positive, uh, very positive trap, a uh, very positive line. Sorry. Uh, I would say also that uh, now is the first year when objectives can be achieved. There is that managerial trio, uh, which is composed by planning establishing the objectives, doing the evaluation and apply the consequences, positive or negative. I would say that now 2022 is the first year when you can say that we can really establish achievable objectives. We can really make a straight evaluation and we can start applying uh, uh, the consequences. What about our uh, direction of expansion in the, next, uh, in the next period? I would say that the most important is to focus on the countries where we already are present because going in new markets uh, is not, it's expensive, it becomes expensive and you have to empower and to make stronger your company. So as company direction, we are focusing on the 15 countries where we are present now. And of course, we want as an objective for 2022 to enter in the Middle East. Thank you, guys. Very nice. First of all, uh, quite impressive. I mean, the list of the countries and trying to expand basically uh, your company into all these nations, because in the end, I think going international really is the ultimate way here and your company is doing its very best. So uh, here at uh, basically Top Franchise, we understand the importance of internationalism and how we have to actually focus on expanding globally. And that's exactly what you guys are doing. So it's an amazing you know, uh, procedure that we like to see develop further in the future. And of course, it was indeed a pleasure to uh, have you with us and great pr presentation. I'll move on now basically to our next speaker, uh, Konstantin uh, Kudrytsev, uh, PhD Partnership Manager at Libertex Group from Cyprus, as well as partnership with Ukraine. So, Konstantin, it's a yeah. pleasure to have you well, with guys. us on this conference. And I would like to actually go ahead, uh, tell our listeners more about yourself and go straight to your presentation. Hello, guys. First of all, thank you. Thank you for organizing such an event. And uh, also, I want to thank uh, Top Franchise for this event and also for all support that they are providing to uh, franchisees, to those companies who have franchise. And guys, you're doing a really good job. 
and with your help we are now entering partnership with uh, a very valuable to us uh, potential uh, for HNZ and we hope that everything will be uh, good with that and uh, I wish you to continue like what you are doing here. So I'm representing the company called Libertex. It's an international forex uh, broker and we are uh, present in more than 100 countries. Now we are rapidly developing and uh, uh, COVID restrictions don't stop us because our business is in nearly, I can say, 10% uh, of those businesses that grow no matter any kind of economic crisis or uh, some kind of pandemic. If people are sitting at home, they are uh, trading through their devices at home. So we had even a growth of our business uh, during the pandemic time. Now we are rapidly growing in Latin America and uh, from the beginning of the year, we already uh, launched five offices in uh, Argentina, Colombia, in Guatemala, in Mexico. So our company is developing with uh, its strategy. And uh, we are also proposing you to become our partners. I even don't say franchise, but partnership because we don't charge any kind of fees, royalties, and we even uh, compensate marketing costs. So in our business, we, are, we have a lack of people who want to uh, who want to earn money and who are ready to work together with us. And that's the main thing that we are searching for. It's uh, people who are ready to work. That's why we call our franchise partnership because we are not charge, char charging any kind of costs uh, from our uh, partners. So uh, saying about um, financial markets, they became quite popular uh, recently and uh, everyone knows about uh, some trading strategy. Everyone knows that uh, people trade on stock and make good money on that. And our business makes uh, this idea real to people and we became number one broker uh, in the world, I mean, in mobile devices. And currently our company is uh, in uh, among one of the 10 performers, uh, top 10 performers in our sector. So uh, I, I'm not going to spend lots of your time. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, you invited uh, me to have a speech, uh, to have a short talk in this conference. And I will be very glad to answer your questions. And uh, uh, also I want to, uh, how can I say it in English? Sorry, uh, guys, I want to invite you all cooperating with Top Franchise because they are connecting people really they're really professionals in connecting people. And also, if anyone is interested in more de detailed information regarding cooperation with our company, and if anyone wants to launch a, a trading school or a representation of a trading company in, uh, in a location, we are open and we will be glad to provide maximum information to you. We are a transparent and open company ready to share our statistics, knowledge and model of business. So thanks guys, thank you for inviting. And if you have questions, I'm glad to answer them. First of all, uh, thank you so much, Konstantin, for your performance. Great job so far. And uh, basically it was uh, very clear and I think our listeners fully understood uh, basically your statements. Just to go to the chat very quickly, we had one of the questions, of course it was addressed yeah. globally, not necessarily in your case, which was about, does Salad Box has any plans to expand in Pakistan? That's of course another question that we had here. But in general, in terms of basically the overall presentation was quite clear. And we'd like to thank you as well for your uh, basically presentation and the way that you presented basically your ideas here for our yeah. global audience. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, you know, uh, we are not present in Pakistan at the moment, but it's uh, a great market and it's a big opportunity to be present there. And if uh, some of our viewers is interested to discuss this idea, I am open to it. And let's just schedule a short call where we can discuss it. Please just contact me. I'm, I'm ready to answer your questions. Very nice. And please do us a favor and try to leave all your contacts because we definitely have viewers who are interested basically. Oh, sure, in sure. Yes, so I'm doing it right now. Uh, do this uh, in this regard. And of course, I uh, would like to thank you again for your performance, Constantine. Great job on that. And uh, just to go back to basically our uh, listeners, 
Uh, we'd like to talk a bit more about the ready-made store here, basically. And we had a comment about this one earlier, uh, about uh, the fact that it's uh, simply made of a lot of great, uh, basically, team made of different, you know, uh, language speakers, English, Spanish, and so on and so forth. But of course, that's for something else. But in general, it's uh, basically a great uh, chance to have you uh, with, with, with us, basically, Constantine. It was all there, and I will move on now to address the issue with our viewers, basically. Thank you for the presentation. Thank it you. Was great. Thank you so and much. We'll definitely be in touch. Just do us a favor. And this, of course, applies to all of our speakers. Leave all of your contacts. We can actually connect uh, contact with you later on and uh, allow our viewers to actually reach you. Sure, Daniel. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. The pleasure is mine. Very bye well, bye. take care. And of course, back to you, the viewers. As you probably have already seen, we have a lot of great uh, speakers on the show, and they all would like to share with you their ideas. And uh, if you, of course, have any questions or you'd like to reach any of our speakers or their franchises directly, just contact us or simply leave your comments on basically this uh, uh, program so we can actually use that to later uh, contact the appropriate, uh, basically, uh, people responsible for uh, this job. And uh, of course, we've discussed all these issues and uh, so far, uh, we've managed to reach all of our uh, basically uh, uh, listeners. So before we move on to our uh, basically next uh, speaker, uh, I would like to uh, thank all of you once again for those of you who are now at home watching us, everybody else who is trying to perhaps learn some of the techniques and the tricks of running a great business with the help of uh, basically franchising it. And that's, of course, what we do here uh, in, in this conference to bring all of these interested business people together. Because in the end, franchising, guys, is the future because uh, we are headed towards that future where we need to create more franchises because it becomes a lot more complex to satisfy the customers. And of course, for that reason, it's great to give this one a shot. And of course, the best place to get started is topfranchise.com because uh, this uh, portal allows you to network and reach businesses literally from all parts of the world and from all walks of life. With that being said, I would like to now move on to our next, uh, basically, uh, speaker, uh, Bektimemba Lloyd uh, Nakomo uh, from the Lloyd Corporate Capital, uh, Balueo, Harare, and, of course, Johannesburg. And uh, he's the managing director of the company from Africa. And, sir, if you are online and if you're with us, you can actually go ahead and uh, begin your presentation. Greetings, everyone. Uh, let me share my presentation. That's right. We don't see you yet. So if you could actually share the screen. That's right. Great. We're here. You can now go ahead and begin with your uh, presentation. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for having me. Um, as um, has been said, my name is... Uh, Tembang Kwamo, and I am with a company called Lloyd Corporate Capital. We are based in um, Bulawayo, Zimbabwe, and we are also in Harare and in Johannesburg. Essentially, we are a corporate finance business, and um, the way we got into the franchising business is uh, in now consulting, a lot of the work that we do tended to revolve around uh, business models. And it, after a while, we realized that uh, franchising was uh, probably the most successful of all business models that we have uh, come across. And it became very clear to us that uh, franchising is the business model of the future. So what I would like to do today is I'd like to share with you um, a personal perspective on some of the things that I think uh, shortcomings, some of the things that are potential uh, wins for franchisees and for franchisors that are wanting to come into Africa. Because what we have now set about to do is we have said we are going to put together uh, a couple of partners, uh, top franchise being one of them, partners that we'll work with to try and help franchisees and franchisors that would like to do business in, in Africa. Because uh, as much as uh, Africa is um, uh, a favorite uh, of a lot of people, there are certain things that are slightly different to the rest of the world. And we have put ourselves out there and are making ourselves the experts, so to speak, about Africa. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a personal perspective about a, a couple of things uh, in, in Africa. 
So here are some of the top franchise uh, categories that are, are, are happening now in, uh, in Africa. Uh, there's the B2B opportunities, there's coffee and food outlets. This includes restaurants, the sit down restaurants, the takeaway restaurants, or the delivery restaurants, the retail outlets, whether it's clothing, electrical goods, uh, and so on, children's activities, education facilities, property and real estate, internet related uh, franchises, the travel and leisure. And interestingly, one would have thought that would have taken a bit of a knock during the pandemic, but uh, it seems to be still on the rise. And also computers and, and uh, as well as home improvement uh, franchises. Those are like the most common franchise categories in, uh, in Southern Africa. And we are spending quite a bit of time trying to understand them and trying to see how best we can help both the franchisee and the franchisor. In terms of franchises, uh, the footprint that is there uh, in, uh, in, in Africa in particular, um, South Africa with 59 million people, Egypt with 102 million people, Morocco with 36, Nigeria 206, Kenya with 53, and Cote d'Ivoire with 26.4 million people. These are where the six, these are the six countries where franchising is seemingly successful, where franchising has taken root. Um, but there are 54 countries in Africa. 54 countries are, and only six really can stand up and say that uh, the franchising uh, model is, uh, is alive and active. And um, if you look at the total population in Africa, it's 1.3 billion with a GDP of 6.7 trillion. Uh, the total population for the six countries is uh, that I mentioned um, where franchising is active is 484 million uh, with a GDP of 1.37 trillion. These are United States dollars, by the way, where it's money. And the unserviced population, therefore, with the difference between 1.3 and 4, 484 million is about 816 million. Now, these are 2020 numbers. So as we go into 2022, 23, these numbers, the unserviced population gets closer to a billion people uh, very quickly just in Africa. And the GDP as of 2020 was 5.33 trillion. So it says that there is a huge opportunity in terms of servicing a certain market or certain markets in Africa. But in doing so, you need to adapt to certain conditions. You need to adapt certain thinking, certain things need to change. And I'm just going to mention a few, a few things that uh, need to change and a few things that franchisors and franchisees need to be aware of as they try and navigate the African jungle. The products and services. It always amazes me why I can go into a restaurant, say Nando's for argument's sake, in Durban, South Africa, but can only order certain types of food and none of the local foods. The menus of restaurants in a lot of cases are restricted and are driven by certain tastes. Yes, it's a Mexican restaurant. Yes, it's an Italian or Portuguese restaurant. But there is need for that franchise to be a little bit more accommodating to allow um, local foods to be enjoyed there. For example, the example of Durban that I spoke about now, you need to, you should be able to get a bunny chow at almost any restaurant in, in Durban because the bunny chow is the Durban food. And for any tourist that goes there, they would want to experience the local food, even at a restaurant that they are familiar with, whether they come from Europe or America or India or wherever. And McDonald's has done this reasonably well in China. And I'm sure that uh, as restaurants come into Africa, a similar sort of thing can be done and can possibly be done better. Subway in India has also done it very well with their vegetarian subs. They are chicken and lamb for, for, for Hindus and for Muslims because of the beef and pork issues. And 
that sort of concept, that sort of thinking is the same thinking that needs to, to be applied to, to product and to services that are, are being uh, offered in, um, in Africa. The supplier side is a huge challenge for a lot of um, franchisees where, whereby certain product is not allowed to be bought, uh, certain inputs cannot be bought locally, they need to be bought from certain specified imported or foreign countries. And this is a missed opportunity in my opinion. We would like to see a situation where the local suppliers are used, yes, improve local production and improve the product, but use the local suppliers. For example, an incident that happened uh, recently uh, in Kenya, KFC was throwing, was. Uh, running out of uh, potatoes, whereas the farmers there were throwing away potatoes because they hadn't been uh, helped to grow the right type and right size of potatoes. KFC in Zimbabwe, for example, imports potatoes and chickens. Why? It's an opportunity to improve local production and local products. And that is what as franchisors and the franchisees we need to be looking at from a supply perspective. Once these local suppliers have been improved, have been capacitated, they become customers and ambassadors of the products and services that uh, we are trying to sell as franchisees and franchisors. But of course, it doesn't mean that we need to drop standards to be able to do this. We maintain the high standards that we are demanding of the international suppliers, and we bring those standards to, to the African supplier, to the African uh, producer, and thereby up their standard of living as well. So we talk, we've spoken about product and services, spoken about supply, then we're talking about the marketing strategies. This is actually a very big topic, um, but uh, what I'll just say here is that markets are people and not products. So when a franchisee or franchisor devises marketing strategies for their product or for the service, we are advising that look at the markets as people, not as the products that you have. You don't have, you have global products, but they're not global people. So we need to have different people, different markets being treated differently. And with our understanding of the local markets, of the markets in Africa, we're able to help the franchisors and the franchisees um, formulate more profitable marketing strategies. There is no one size fits all approach in uh, in this in this uh, in marketing, particularly in in Africa. Systems, processes, and procedures. The pace of change, whether it's technological, environmental, societal, and so on, requires that tried and tested uh, systems, procedures, and processes be used so that you take advantage of time factor, time of developing, you, you gain knowledge from what somebody has tested and somebody has used. But this tends to bring about rigidity of processes. And we are urging the, the franchisors and franchisees to say, put an entrepreneurial flair of the local, of the local people and allow the local franchisees to change a few things, obviously not everything, because otherwise you destroy the model, but the model has to be such that it can accommodate a certain flair that the local entrepreneur, that the local franchisee has towards that particular business. They are in that business primarily because they enjoy being in that business. So allow them that space. Take for example, Subway in India again. Counter areas and preparation areas are now separated to, because vegetarians prefer not to be served from the same plant, place that uh, non-vegetarian foods are prepared. That is a, a flair that came about, it was out of necessity, yes, but Subway has allowed that and has seen that and it's become profitable for them and they are aware of those changes in the procedures that they, they implement. The mass market in Africa is a growing market. At the moment, uh, currently, 
the countries that I spoke about, the six countries, are saving probably 30% of the population. The lower end of the market needs these products and these services. And we need to be able to provide services and products that are, are, are acceptable to the lower end of the market. In a lot of cases, a lot of markets in Africa, the mass market, the informal market, that is the market that is growing. It is not so much the upper end of the market. The upper end of the market is fairly stagnant, fairly uh, stable, but there is a lot of growth in the numbers um, in the mass market and in the informal market. Granted, yes, the margins are thinner there, but there is volumes and the money is going to be in the numbers as opposed to simply just the bigger margins. Culture is a big part, a huge part. Differences in culture affect the purchasing patterns of consumers, behavior of other stakeholders, including employees, the cost of monitoring and logistical support to a franchisee. And it's important that as a franchisee, a franchisor, you understand what the culture is. Cultures will differ from continent to continent, from country to country, and even within the country itself, there will be certain differences in culture. And us and our partners have taken it upon ourselves to understand all these small things that make a difference to, to the business. The last one is the legal landscape. There's really no strong franchise regulation or related legislation in existence in Africa. So what tends to happen is that businesses or franchisees and franchisors tend to align themselves to the traditional model and are therefore subjected to the old business models as far as regulations are concerned. But there are other smaller things that can be done within those regulations in order to accommodate the franchisor and the franchisees, because this is the new business model for the future. So how can we help you? As potential franchisees, we can help you choose the right franchise for yourself. We can expand your distribution channels nationally and regionally. We can help with staff training, recruitment and development. We can give you a better understanding of the African landscape. As, as potential franchisors, we can help you get to franchise your business. We can take you through the franchise process from the beginning to the end. We can carry out all the necessary legal, environmental, and all the assessments on your behalf. And we can complete all your statu statutory documentation for you. We can help grow your network across the continent. And we're doing this together with our partners. Africa is not the next frontier. Africa is the current frontier as we speak. And we're here to help you. We'll be able to navigate it for you. We'll be able to take you through all the challenges that Africa has uh, for people that are coming from outside purely because of the knowledge that we have built and are continuing, continuing to build around the African uh, business environment. Those are our contact details. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. The pleasure was ours. Thank you very much for your presentation. Very solid. And before I let you go, just a quick question, because you mentioned that your company can actually help all over Africa. So basically, uh, one of your statements in the presentation was global products are not for global people. And I quote, so do you actually use this strategy with separate nations in Africa? Because obviously it's one continent, but each nation has its own culture. So do you offer, you know, uh, separate basically advices for separate nations in Africa, or you have a general approach towards the entire continent? Our, our strategy is, is that uh, each country has its own cultures, has its own understandings, has its own innuendos. But even within the same country, you will get certain parts of the population that subscribe or ascribe to certain different cultures. And we need to be, take care of those different cultures. We need to understand them. We need not just to be aware of them, but we need to take advantage of those cultures. 
and see how we can help the franchisee and the franchisee to make more money simply by understanding the environment they're operating in. Fantastic. Very well said. And I would like to thank you one more time for an amazing presentation. And I hope, of course, we'd be glad if you left your contacts uh, also on the chat so we can actually be in touch with you later on. And thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very well. I'll move on to our next speaker. His name is Orkan Ahmadov. He's the founder of uh, Armado, uh, uh, basically Cafe House from Germany. So let's move on now to you. Do you hear us well? We're now going to move on to our next speaker. Orkan Ahmadov. Uh, if you hear us, please let us know. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear Fantastic. me? Fantastic. Glad to Perfect. have you with us uh, basically for uh, this uh, global conference. It's a pleasure uh, to have people like you on our show. So we hear you. We cannot uh, see you yet, but of course, we got your uh, basically audio with us. So first of all, let's, let's you know start off first with uh, you know your a general introduction. I'd like to actually go ahead and tell us about yourself and your company. Can you see me now? Now we see and Perfect. hear you just fine. So pleasure to see you finally. Now, you, first Rich. of all, uh, I would like to actually ask you to go ahead and tell us about yourself and basically your company. Um, I am Orkan Ahmadov. Uh, I'm the owner of the Ormado Coffee House. Uh, we are existing not that long. We don't have that um, uh, such a big history you know, since 2017. Okay, we are based in Germany. Our first shops were was in Germany, and then we start to uh, slowly, slowly to make more branches in another and other countries like Austria, Ukraine, Azerbaijan. Yeah. Fantastic. So you mentioned some of these nations. Uh, how many nations are they, uh, by, by the way, like in general? So you mentioned a couple of them. Uh, nations, you mean in how many different countries we are? That's right. Of course. Perfect. Um, we are, uh, like I said before, we are based in Germany. Uh, then we opened the second one in Azerbaijan, the second country, I mean. That's right. Where I am from. Um, it was easy for me. Uh, and then the third one was the Austria. And Austria is uh, close to, to Germany. We are neighbors. And then in uh, Ukraine. And now okay. at the end of the year, it has to be in Dubai. Oh, that's great. So you're actually expanding. Thanks. So let's move on now to our main question today. And that is about, you know, the tools that you use to actually uh, promote the business. So from your perspective, which franchise promotion tools actually are the most effective? Uh, of course, there are many tools and in each business, it depends if I advise some tool, maybe it will be good for one business and not so good for another one. It has to match this business, this tool. I think in general, uh, the best tool is the opening more and more shops it is the better than any other promotion. This is my opinion. Interesting. And how about the cost, basically? What if you open the store in certain locations and the return on investment is not that high? Uh, sorry, your English is so good that I didn't understand <laughs> That's it. right. <laughs> what I wanted to know is uh, what will happen if you actually open a store? Because you mentioned your best strategy is to open new stores. Now, in terms of you know investment from an investment perspective, what if just opening a new store might not bring the, you know, the, the high enough return on that investment? What if it's just a little bit too risky? Of course, uh, you are uh, very right. Um, opening the new shop, it's not uh, the end of the goal. You have to open it and you have to make it in a right way. It has to run in a right way because if it's run in a wrong way, it, ha it can be also the bad promotion for you. You know, uh, so my opinion that, of course, there is the promotions, the Internet uh, and, uh, and many other ways, many other tools to promote your brand. But the best way for it is, like I said before, um, having more branches in different countries uh, and proving that uh, my product is not only 
um, good in my country, also in a different country. So it is the best uh, proof that your product is universally good, Fantastic. not only good in your country. Yes, and if it runs also good, it's the best promotion for you. You can always say that go to my shop and watch it, how it's running. Fantastic. So. Very well. And of course, your industry was one of the uh, those industries that was, you know, uh, basically hit the hardest by the pandemic. So uh, yeah. what are some of your advices about, you know, how to actually develop and expand your business amidst uh, the coronavirus pandemic? Uh, of course, we're at the final stages of the pandemic, but still it, uh, it's a uh, crisis uh, nonetheless. So what advices would you give to uh, the entrepreneurs out there who would like to expand their business amidst this pandemic? I hope that uh, you are right, that we are in the final uh, stage of this pandemic. I hope this is the going uh, slowly, slowly to the final. Um, the, uh, my, from my side, advice uh, can be that we are entrepreneurs and we have to always be ready for any risks. So it can be today it's the coronavirus, tomorrow it's some another different uh, economic crisis. We have to be uh, ready for it. That's why we are um, entrepreneurs, you know? Yeah. Um, in this uh, time, of course, it hit us uh, bad because our um, business, it's uh, more, um, it's with food and with this healthy stuff and so on. Uh, we started to make the deliveries. We started to make some things online and to selling the online coffees for home and so on. And this is how um, we try it, uh, to survive. Fantastic. Well, entrepreneurs are survivors and they have to learn to adapt themselves with all yeah. situations. Great uh, performance so far. Is there any other tips you would like to leave for our audience as your final, uh, basically, comment? Um, no, thank you. Uh, I wish you good luck. Thank you for inviting me. It was an honor for me to participate in your uh, Global Franchise Conference. Thank you very no, much, guys. Ours. Thank you very much for your advice. And hopefully your business will expand globally and we will continue to hear more from you and your team in the future. Thank you very much. Sure. I will Thanks. now move on to our next speaker, uh, basically, for the show. Uh, his name is Mohammed Naim Yonis. Uh, he's the managing director at Franchising Key Pakistan, and he's now with us to uh, tell us basically about how to run franchises and, of course, tell us more about his uh, basically business. So, Mohammed, are you with us? Uh, if you do uh, basically hear us, go ahead and start your presentation. We are now waiting on our next speaker. And in the meantime, that's right. We see you fine and we hear you just fine. So, Mohammed, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, you can actually now turn on the microphone and go ahead and tell us about your company. And if you have any presentation, you can go ahead and offer your presentation for uh, basically our viewers. Okay. Hello, everyone. Greeting from Pakistan. This is Mohammed Naim, Managing Director at Franchising Key Pakistan. Franchising Key Pakistan being designed to assist franchisers, franchise seekers, and investors in achieving their objectives regarding franchise business development in Pakistan market. We offer multiple services to franchisers, franchise seekers, from buying a franchise to launch a franchise across different geographies of Pakistan. Franchise advisory is for the people who wish to acquire their wish list brand in Pakistan market. And similarly, franchise investment being designed for the investors who wish to make investment in franchise industry as a silent partner. We also designed a very really new service for the clients as a new franchise development for the people who wish to live the dreams of starting a very really new franchise concept with their exceptional ideas. Pakistan Franchising in Pakistan is a leading firm which 
also offer services to the franchisors and offer comprehensive lead generation program lead generation program to sell the fran their franchises in pakistan market although pakistan is not a very big market but refranchising can be done for the brands like mcdonald kfc hardee's because they do have extensive long history of operations in pakistan market we also offer customized services or franchise advisory services or the uh, franchise system development services for both existing and emerging franchisers. To achieve our missions or the provision of services, we constantly connect with the franchise development firms or our global partners. We have already joined hands with some of our uh, premium franchise development firms uh, like topfranchise.com, Asia Wide Franchise, East West Franchise, we have franchise consulting firm, French Smart Franchise Specialist and Middle East Franchise Incorporation. We believe that joining hand is the only key for the success of franchise development firms as we are intermediaries or matchmakers or consultants we need to get updated or latest information to share with the franchise prospects. And this can only be done if we start sharing with each, with each other. Pakistan is not a very big country. It's a developing country, but have huge potential to become one of the largest economy in Asia. Share with the franchise. With an exceeding population of over 200 million and a composite of more than 64% people. Pakistan is not a very big country, it's a developing country, but have huge potential to become one of the largest economy in Asia. Below the age of 30, young people are highly adaptive of trending or fashions so they always give tremendous response to the new franchise brands in Pakistan. I'm here. Yes, we hear you. Go ahead with your presentation. It's all okay. clear. So uh, regarding the franchise industry of Pakistan, franchising in Pakistan started in 1903 with the arrival of Pizza Hut in Pakistan market. Now there are more than 200 global brands uh, comprises of hotels, restaurants, courier services, cosmetics, footwear, and uh, these multinational companies make a collective investment around $2.5 billion. And uh, from the franchise, franchisee prospectives, they are paying around 1.5 billion in terms of royalties to their franchises. The brands which are already operating in Pakistan market uh, have come under master or country development or multi-unit development agreements. So the, what are the opportunities or challenges uh, Pakistan market right now facing in terms of the franchise expansions? Fran Pakistan government or the legislation always welcomes foreign direct investments and provide extensive support in doing the business. So you may say that it's a ease of doing business place. Regarding the sales, Pizza Hut has been awarded as a Pizza Hut's of one of the store of Pizza Hut from Pakistan hit the Asia's highest sales. Similarly, Hardy's uh, gained the same award. Also, Fat Burger Pakistan gained the highest sales record uh, around the world. So uh, how people of Pakistan welcomes the new brands if they could be properly marketed. Meanwhile, the population uh, advantages, you may get a low labor, uh, low cost labor from Pakistan market uh, due to, you may say, higher unemployment. The challenge is uh, but that's good for the businessman. The challenges uh, for, for the Pakistani franchise prospects are 
Pakistan is not the priority market in the minds of brands expansions. We usually pursue many brands. We may approach around 100 or 200 brands every year, but they are willing to enter into the Pakistan market. Because Pakistan, in Pakistan, in over 15 years, McDonald had opened up around 100 stores. And you may say that 100 is the final number for any successful brand in Pakistan market because it's now saturated everywhere. Plus procurement of equipment uh, to reach in Pakistan could take more than 100 days or the procurement of raw materials or the proprietary goods assigned by the franchises also take the same time. That's why we need to uh, some time uh, airlift the goods in case uh, we get huge response from the market after the launch. Meanwhile, when we set the pricing of the product, the conversion rate hits us a lot. And uh, the product price, what we, uh, the franchisee being getting are too high in terms of competitive rate uh, when they are setting a selling price. So these are the challenges and the opportunities which I had shared uh, with you regarding the Pakistan market. But the agenda uh, for uh, speaking here is uh, somehow different from that, that uh, we, I, we wish to, or we believe that being a joint hands with each other, we can, uh, being a teamwork, we can uh, share we can uh, by for achieving our goals we may hire our, uh, we may define a list of opportunities uh, with mutual discussions and uh, we can hire a centralized marketing team uh, like if we are eight or ten companies ten marketing franchise development firm we can hire a centralized marketing agency to design our uh, format for email marketing, or we can calendar the uh, email marketing uh, schedule, or we may also hire a, a email sender agency in order to market the opportunities, bundle of market uh, opportunities once in an year. And uh, this, would, uh, uh, this would help us to create more and more brand awareness to our franchise prospects and for uh, the timely provision of services. This would help us to support uh, timely information with each other. That's all uh, that what I, I would like to share with you. Thank you very much. Truly appreciate your presentation. Just one quick question I wanted to ask you regarding Pakistan. Okay. As you probably know, foreign investment is oftentimes done in foreign currencies, usually, you know, reserve currencies like the dollar, uh, basically. And what is your projection regarding the future of Pakistan's economy in terms of its overall stability, both in terms of the currency, because they want to capture, you know, their return on investment, and of course, the general economy as a whole in the coming years and uh, uh, from your perspective? Pakistan market is being now stabilized in terms of uh, political because uh, since the last 10 or 15 years, uh, the uh, political uh, alliances have completed their tenures and they have uh, the first time in the Pakistan of history, the government of Pakistan started to pay back the loans of IMFs. And uh, with the last three years, they had paid well Though this created a lot of inflation in Pakistan market and suffered a, a lot of poor people, but now we are moving ahead in the right directions and uh, we are getting again benefits ag against that in terms of uh, flexibility of trading in international markets. And uh, I think the Pakistan economy is growing. And uh, uh, again, uh, we could create a slot with the name as BRICS, uh, which could, uh, which will be a, uh, you can say, team of China, Sri Lanka, India, and uh, 
Pakistan, Afghanistan as well. Uh, America is out from Afghanistan, so it's a good for trading. It's a neighborhood country uh, to us, and uh, with the same religion, religious people, we are here to promote, or we are, you can say, we are heading them uh, how to go in the international market. So the market basically being expanded. Uh, we have another country as a market right now. Great. Thank you very much for presenting one more time. Great and well done. Definitely. Please leave your contacts for our viewers and we will definitely be in touch. And once again, thank you for your great presentation. Uh, I you. will now move on to our uh, basically next speakers. Uh, Andre uh, Krivonis, uh, as uh, of course, is a partner with Edward, uh, basically uh, Nigovin. Uh, of course, Andre is the CEO of Ukrainian Franchise Association. Uh, with Edward, who is also director of the International Department of Ukrainian Franchising Association. They are actually reaching us now uh, from Ukraine. So Andre, uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us, uh, basically, and uh, we'd like you to go ahead right now. If you'd like to start with your presentation, we are here to actually uh, follow up. Hello, thank you. My name is Andre Kivanov. I'm head of Ukrainian Franchise Association. In December last year, we celebrated our 20th anniversary and we are co continue our history of development, uh, developing new products, new tools for as Ukrainian and as for foreign franchisors. For example, we have new updated our logo. Uh, the highlights of this year will be uh, such things. The beginning of implementation of our franchise doctrine 2030 year, a roadmap for development and franchise market in Ukraine. In our associations, start working committees uh, that help franchisors to find our partners faster. We start certification program for franchisors and voluntary registration of franchise agreement. Uh, these uh, deals help us to make more, uh, transform the, our market more interesting to st start business in, in our market. Already franchisors in Ukraine can use the service of arbitration franchise card and in resolving disputes. And soon our franchise finance fund will help our franchisors financially. And I please, uh, uh, Edward Ngavan, our director of international department, tell about our, uh, our international work. Thank you. And where is our Edward? Edward, are you with us? Edward? I believe that Edward is currently not uh, basically uh, online or if you can switch uh, yourself because we do not see him on the list. That's right. So if Edward is not with us, you can actually continue until Edward, you can actually go with the, the performance until Edward joins basically the conversation. Okay. Uh, we have some deals to develop our cooperation in uh, other countries. First of all, our main to for this year, make decision to complete our membership in World Franchise Council in European Franchise Federation. We, we are, have many um, tries to start working with uh, this uh, very interesting, very popular uh, franchise uh, uh, activity in, in, in the world. Try and today I will mean to start. And I see uh, Eduard uh, con connect, uh, connect us and uh, can speak more. That's correctly. right. Edward is now with us. English. That's right. So, I'm Edward, sorry, if, you hear us, English, but, uh, Edward, if you hear us, Edward, perfect. please go ahead. Thank you, Edward. Hello. Hi, Edward. If you are with us, please go ahead and uh, uh, go ahead with your presentations. Hello. It's a pleasure to have you with us. So now we can actually go ahead and continue where Andre left off. Okay. Uh, let me introduce myself. My uh, my full name is Edward Nygoven. Uh I represent an international department director of Ukrainian Franchising Association. And this year I'm engaged in moderating on the international franchise market in Ukraine. 
<clears throat> in Ukraine and promote overseas franchises to enter franchise in Ukrainian market and be successful for in our country. So our goal of Ukrainian Franchise Association is to proceed franchise and business activity on international franchise conference like that, but ultimately to become active member in International Franchise Council and also uh, join uh, European Franchise Federation. I, uh, I fortunately, I have to, uh, I have to say we have we have postponed this decision before, but now we are aware where all this kind of cooperation will push to develop for Ukrainian franchisee franchisers and all and come overseas franchise into, into Ukrainian market. Eventually, Ukrainian uh, franchiser are willing to an active active part in our world exhibitions. This year, we will take more efforts to agonize and make national display stand in Paris and New York too. So we will likely take part in the another international export. Also, our members of Ukrainian association intend in the participating in the online exhibition uh, expositions too. So now we are ready to propose Ukrainian uh, catalog of franchise franchises for over, overseas franchises to publish your uh, their exposition there, and also we invite any foreign franchises and company to take an active part of franchises exhibition in Kiev, which will take place in uh, March this year. So in the second half, to tell the truth, in the second half of 2021, we noticed a, a live demand over uh, franchise presentation from company, which uh, scheduled to come into Ukraine market, market. As well, we are ready to provide for future partners for searching for new, uh, new franchises in our country and promote the needful information. So during uh, during Ukraine uh, Ukrainian French, uh, franchising association activity, we have picked up a lot of contents all over the world. We schedule to update such contents and want to communicate with every overseas association of franchises member and interested company company privately. So we are very grateful for such opportunity to speak today for everyone. And we are thankful for organizers to have given a word for us. So in conclusion, I would, I would invite every foreign companies, company and their friend and partners to communicate and will meet uh, any questions to discuss any proposal for each franchise business the business sector so i have finished thank you so much thank you very much edward for your presentation just a quick question because now a mere google search uh for the word ukraine brings a lot of you know uh troubling news should we or the investors uh be concerned about the political developments surrounding ukraine these days and from your perspective as you mentioned there's going to be an exhibition this march uh, will that necessarily be, uh, take place? And should the investors uh, somehow uh, be worried about that? Or do you think that there will be no problems whatsoever? Of course, uh, all uh, everyone uh, pay more, more attention to political situation all over, uh, all uh, around our the borders. But to tell the truth, it doesn't concern, it doesn't concern this political situation because we have our business to, to pay attention about another another point over franchise, so we we leave this this concern, <laughs> this Very concern nice. to to come to this uh, franchise association exhibition, uh, which take place this year. Of course, uh, this is concern. I mean, uh, political association for politics, for leaders, not for us.
Very nice. Great this and reassuring. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. We appreciate your presentation, Edward, and definitely uh, we look forward to seeing you and hopefully uh, to see how these franchises are going to be expanded in Ukraine. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was uh, quite concisive. I'll move on now to our next speaker, Martin Hancock, the managing partner, Thank World you. Franchise Associates from Chicago, United States. So, uh, uh, Mark, if you actually uh, hear us, you can actually go ahead with your uh, presentation. It's a pleasure to have you with us. You can actually go ahead. And Hi, Daniel. You. How are you? The pleasure is mine. Life is great. And of course, you're now, yep. the stage is yours to go yep. ahead with your performance. Let me, uh, let me share my screen here, just one second. All right, well, first of all, um, thank you very much to Top Franchise and Vasil and the team for putting this excellent event on. Um, my name is Martin Hancock. I'm a CEO, I'm, I'm managing partner of World Franchise Associates. Um, we're a franchise sales, marketing, development, and advisory company. Uh, we're, in, we're headquartered in London, though I'm in Chicago, and we've got a couple of offices in strategic franchise uh, franchise markets across the world. Um, our core programs focus on helping franchises from all sectors of the franchise industry with their international expansion. Um, we represent about 100 brands. Um, and we're helping them develop from their own countries to many parts of the world, but we focus particularly on uh, Asia and the Middle East. We have a franchise development program that will help franchisors uh, create a package that will allow them to expand um, as a franchisor. And we also in, advise investors, um, assisting companies and individuals with the acqu acquisition for franchise rights in their region, country, or, or area. We also help, uh, we also have an, uh, a program for institutions and governments to facilitate franchising uh, in their country. These are uh, various vehicles. Um, World Franchise Center, if you would like to visit it, is our sales site. And there you can um, evaluate franchises in all sectors of the franchise industry. We put on events uh, in various parts of the world and uh, we have a news, news feed called Fran Speak. What I like to talk about just for a few minutes today is some of the trends that we're seeing in franchising worldwide. Um, in, in, increased health consciousness, obviously, is a big part of what's happened over the last couple of years. Um, everybody is concentrating on their health and understanding the difference um, to their life, I guess, that that being healthy makes. So obviously um, fitness falls into this category. Um, the fitness trend now is for boutique fitness. It's uh, small space, typically lower startup costs. And the franchisors have expertise in one or maybe two forms of exercise. Let me give you some examples. Uh, kickboxing or boxing, Pilates, yoga, bar, stretch, boot camp, cycling. These are all um, boutique fitness concepts that are growing now and will continue to grow as, um, as people uh, concentrate more on their fitness. And boutique fitness isn't, isn't about running on a treadmill, it's about being very good at something, it's being empowered by a workout, it's, be, it's working out with a group. Um, and this is one of the trends that we'll see moving forward. 
The second one also, you know, for the same reasons is, is healthy food. I think an example of the way the healthy food trend is going is the fact we're seeing some of the big brands um, change traditionally not healthy food. Um, salads at McDonald's, veggie options on Domino's pizza, but that's really not what it's about. It's about um, plant-based, it's, um, it's about the millennials looking after themselves. Um, and it's been around for a long time. It started around, it started with juice bars, but now we've got salads, pokies, vegetarian, vegan, seafood, soups, etc. And another area that um, I believe will, well, not I believe, that will grow is kids' fitness, fitness and education, development, de developmental minds, milestones, franchises that give kids um, give kids the edge, uh, learning things at a very early age that skills that help you through the rest of your life. And then finally, though it doesn't, uh, doesn't necessarily fall, un fall under the healthy category is we're seeing a burgeoning um, trend in the gastro gaming space. Now, this started off many years with bowling alleys, but now you can go to a bowling alley and have a five star meal. A darts um, and shuffleboard and all of these things where you combine eating with an event, golf, top golf. This is a trend that we'll see continue will continue to see grow for the same reasons. It's um, millennial driven. All of these are millennial driven, and that's why we're seeing um, expansion in these areas. If you want to evaluate these brands, as I say, please visit worldfranchisecenter.com. Um, I'll also be happy to help you, um, anybody here, if they'd like a one-on-one -on -one, um, review of, of franchises that they um, that fall into their uh, goals for development. Here is my contact information. Again, it's Martin Hancock and my uh, email address and uh, and my direct contact number. Hello. So we don't have a huge amount of time here. So I think that's it from me. Again, thank you. And thank you for everybody on this webinar who attended. Definitely, Martin. Thank you very much. Just a quick question about the gastro gaming you mentioned. So as you probably know, one of the biggest buzzwords among most millennials these days is actually the concept of metaverse. So do you think this might actually affect uh, this, uh, when it comes to franchising, or do you feel like there's no such thing as, you know, a, a major impact uh, from, you know, metaverse uh, when it comes to gastro gaming and other types of franchises that focus on gaming? Metaverse. I've never heard that word. What's that? That's right. Well, the whole concept of creating gaming with these, you know, goggles on your head and oh, like, like oh, Facebook okay. changed its no, name to no, Meta that, after, you know, all that's, these things. That, that's really not, that's, that's a very good observation, but it's not what gastro gaming is about it's about um being in a place where you eat and drink physically not virtually okay um you what that's going to be a big thing too but gastro gaming gaming is like are you familiar with top golf or anywhere where you go and do something people want an event rather they, they want something they can talk about on social media Exactly. They want they want an event, and it's it's all about you know competitive socialising, which as I said started with the bowling alley, but has gone from there onwards. Very nice, fantastic. So thank you so much, Martin, for reassuring our viewers. Basically, and uh, it was a great, splendid presentation, and hopefully you will succeed on this path, basically towards expanding your business globally. Thank you very much. Thank and you very much. You're now. welcome. I'm going to move on now to our next speaker, uh, Jagar uh, Doriwala, the CEO of T Tenacious from India. So uh, let's start with you, Jagar. Do you actually hear us? If you are online, go ahead and the stage is all yours. Yeah, hi. I can hear you. Uh, I think you can hear me as well, Daniel. Absolutely. Everything is fine. You can now go ahead with the introduction okay. of the company, the franchise and your presentation. Great. Can you uh, see my screen as well? Of course, everything is clear. Both okay, uh, great. the video and the audio are both clear. Great. So let me start. I'm just starting the presentation. 
so what we do is we allow uh, entrepreneurs across the world to start their own digital agency with zero risk. And um, about us, like we have been in the, this industry from last 11 years and we provide a full services. For example, we provide website, mobile apps and digital marketing. And we have completed more than 250 pro, uh, three pro projects till date in 11 years. We, we have partnered and have clients across United States, South Africa, India, East Africa, and uh, we are expanding to many cities every month, uh, even with, uh, with the help of top franchise. Um, and we allow anybody uh, to join our partner program and they don't need any technical knowledge. Um, that's the best part of, about our program. Um, so these are some of the clients we have worked with, which are based in India, um, locally as well, and internationally as well. So first of all, uh, after COVID, a um, lot of people have gone online. Um, most of businesses has gone online. So I'm going to share some statistics about digital products. Um, the number of internet users is uh, drastically increasing day by day, and it's forecasted to see reach around 5.3 billion by the end of year 2023, as per a survey by Statistica, which is one of the leading you know, survey firms. And most of consumers have moved dramatically towards online channels. And Richards, researchers have said that around 80% interaction are through digital in nature because when COVID happened, everything was turned off and everybody's, uh, everyone, everybody went online because that was important for every business to survive. And according to search engine uh, uh, ranking page, watch the average small businesses in the United States are spending minimum $497 every month for SEO services or search engine optimization to rank uh, on Google. And these are the uh, opportunities and job creation which is happening in digital space. Around 22% uh, of our course will work remotely. So it's a world is going remotely. And by 2025, you know, 22% of workforce will be doing that. And you will be surprised to know that the average billing rate per hour in United States for a digital company is minimum $167 per hour. So if you go for an agency approach, you want to de develop a website, they're going to start uh, charge minimum that amount on average. And a minimum IT professional salary in the United is over $71,000 as per indeed.com. So anybody can go and check these facts themselves. So what are the current challenges by most of the uh, uh, digital agency owners? So if you want to start your agency, what will be the challenge you will face, which we have faced? Uh, first of all, they lack technical skills. Along with that, they don't even have funds, team, infrastructure, and even don't know have any marketing knowledge. And if they even set up a small team of five people, it's going to cost them minimum $20,000 for setup and $5,000 minimum in, uh, in expenses of wages, rent, um, and et cetera, depending upon which part of the world you are. And moreover, even if you spend this money, there is no guarantee if the business will succeed as they do not have any brand awareness, portfolio, and experience. Um, it is not possible to sell your products when you do not target right people. And it is generally termed as invalid lead program because you know nobody is uh, somebody sending an inquiry but you don't have any portfolio to close them it's generally cost a fortune when you purchase the required marketing and project management tools plus you don't need to choose which one of them will buy uh, that will you know mostly confuse you and there are other number of challenges which every digital agency owner faces if they try to build everything from the scratch so what teenagers do? So we develop a partner success program to solve all this challenge. And how do we do that? So we allow entrepreneurs to start their own agency with a lowest cost of only US $1950. Uh, we allow them to focus on business and not managing technical teams. We give them complete access to our technic team, uh, technical team and they don't have any recurring expenses of salary and, and infrastructure. They also get complete access to our sales and marketing training along with marketing material. And they get access to our brand and uh, portfolio access to allow them to secure clients easily. Some of the benefits of our partner program are they can work from home. Uh, you don't need an office and because everything can be done online today. And looking at uncertainty in almost every business opportunity post-COVID, it is always have a, have a good to have a good backup plan. Uh, and uh, you can always do this business part-time if you're already having a full-time business. The second thing is we have top-notch products available and we are continuously developing in-demand business solutions which will help small business owners to go online. Also, we are very confident that you will be able to attract enough number of clients if you follow our proven system and processes. We will be able to generate qualified leads for you if you go over on our 
premium plans for digital marketing services and products. The third one is you don't need any previous technical knowledge. So if you believe that you need to be an experienced IT professional to be part of this program, then leave that thought behind. As a good news is you need only basic sales, marketing and communication skills. You will also get full access to our sales and marketing training plus ongoing support whenever you get stuck. So you're not going to get email support only, you can even get phone support. And the best part is you can uh, earn recurring income, uh, income and very high profits. Uh, we guarantee that you will earn your investment back within six weeks, uh, 16 weeks if you follow a process or we'll work until you get your investment back. Uh, the investment is also very low, so anybody can afford any, uh, depending on which part of the world you are, it's still affordable, only 1950 US dollars and you have uncapped earning potentials. And it's a global opportunity. The best and unique opportunity, uh, uh, the best and unique thing about this opportunity is you can sell to this to the to clients across the world. You can travel, work from home, or work from office. There is no limitation on which part of the world you have uh, you want to work. And we have products and services uh, which will allow you to serve clients across the world. It is a perfect opportunity that gives you freedom to earn and also travel. So is the business model successful? Uh, yes, we have partners across all these six countries. Uh, this is our partner, Ebony, from United States. States. Uh, as he says, I was able to add additional revenue with my existing coaching business by joining Tunisia's Package Partner Program. I really like the value they provided and was able to secure my first class only within 10 days. Until late, I have worked with a number of projects with Tunisia's Package and I will highly recommend anybody if they are interested in doing digital business. Maria, uh, she's from Germany. Uh, as she says, I was able to generate income while doing working full time in my current job. I really like the SEO training as well as it was easy to understand and optimally structured. The founder Jigar is very uh, friendly and professional trainer who is available during and after business hours. The best part is I was able to get leads, which I converted into paying customers. And you are Mr. Dean from UK. As is, uh, and he says, I was looking for an opportunity that would utilize my hospitality skills. I like what Tunisia Tech is offer, and I have numerous conversations with Jigar before joining the partner program and I have zero IT knowledge. So, and then, yeah, after a number of questions, uh, Mr. Dean joined. And uh, result two of one of our e-commerce clients, I have seen improvement in my sales, new customer acquisition, positive feedback from my clients since I implement an online ordering solution and app for our business. We are looking forward to start exporting, switch to clients across the world. So if you are interested in starting your own agency, if yes, then we have a simple process. You fill up the application form. We discuss and see uh, if you uh, if you qualify and you know meet our prerequisite criteria. And we will advise you what uh, what your role will be. Uh, we'll uh, onboard with you training and uh, lead generation. And then yeah, you have started your own business. You are your own boss. Um, most of the frequently asked questions which people have is like how much does it cost? So we have different. Uh, Pricing plans, but the basic one starts from only $1,950, which includes all the marketing material, your own website, and number of other training. And how does the success guarantee work? Well, we offer conditional guarantee. All we require is that you follow the steps which we have given in the training, attend coaching calls, and watch replays. We are giving you the opportunity to get your investment back within 12 to 4 weeks. And if you don't achieve that, we'll work with you until you get it. Can I work part time or uh, full time? Yes. The work timings are flexible. It does not matter that you work part-time or full-time. But yeah, we advise you to work during business hours uh, in the countries you are located. So do I have the full control? Yes, you are the uh, owner of the business and your own brand. And you will be always in complete control of your business. What skills I need in order to qualify to join Tech is You do not need any specific skills. But we believe that not knowing a skill is not a problem. But willing to learn is the problem. We, sh we shall conduct a series of meetings and just figure out that you have some something or not to decide upon your qualification. And if you still have a uh, question you, uh, and want to contact, yes, it is always great to clear your doubts. And if you have any question, bring them on. And we are happy to connect with you. Uh, this is our website and this is my WhatsApp number. You can personally connect with me if you still have any questions. Thank you very much for your performance. Pretty amazing. Just a quick question I wanted to ask you, uh, because uh, as we already know, India is one of the most popular uh, basically spots for outsourcing because of good pricing and high IT skills in general. You mentioned two things I wanted to clarify. One was your guarantee uh, procedure, which was quite ambitious. You mentioned that you will keep working until the results are actually obtained. Does that mean that there's absolutely no deadline? What if this takes many months or even years? You guys will be with the team throughout the entire process? 
that's right mostly it's not going to take even 3 or 4 months to get the uh, guarantee the reason is the only way they not going to get result is they don't do any work they not following the process that's the only reason we know they won't they, they won't get their uh, you know investment back they are just sitting and doing nothing that is we know that reason so if we um, if they are talking with us and uh, communicating every day hours whenever we see that that there is a uh, some gap in the learning we educate them about the uh, product and the sales process and if they follow it yes they're going to get the investment back fantastic that's a great order and i'm pretty sure that our viewers would love to actually work with you because great pricing and this guarantee is definitely going to make it a lot better for everyone thank you very much uh, jagar for your uh, basically performance i truly appreciate it and it was indeed an honor to have you on the conference very well. Now I'm going to move on to our next speaker, Alex DePasse, founder and CEO of Global Franchise Exchange and World Properties International Franchise, joining us from the U.S. Alex, it's a pleasure to have you with us right now. You are online. Please go ahead and uh, share your ideas with our viewers, which we'd like to actually hear from you. Perfect. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Uh... Uh, exciting times in franchising. Uh, appreciate the time. Let me just load up my PowerPoint here. You've got to uh, let me share my screen, I guess. Host disabled participant screen sharing. That's right. We'll do so right now, right away. All right, everybody see that? My name Absolutely. is Alex, Alex DePace, and I am a uh, franchise executive, franchisor uh, that has been in the business for over 25 years uh, in franchising, franchising as a franchisor, uh, as an executive for top five uh, franchisors, publicly traded companies uh, in the world. I've worked with uh, many companies uh, to help expand their business throughout the world. Um, uh, it's been, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, what's going on now in the market just essentially reaffirms. I, I'm assuming a lot of the uh, viewers that are, are watching this are from uh, Russia. And, uh, you know, one of the things that Vassal and Victor offer as services at Top Franchise are uh, you know the ability to expand overseas internationally? Right. I'm going to talk a little bit about America, but you know I've 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 seen the ups and downs. I've seen uh, been through uh, you know wars, the Gulf War. Uh, you know its impact on uh, you know franchising, on business, on you know we're going into a certain recession here. But the services that Victor and, and Vassal offer at top franchisees are your opportunities, if you're a brand owner, to be able to diversify your business and expand it internationally. I think that's essentially why you're on here. You're listening to people from India, from the Middle East, from Asia, you know, and, and, and boy, it couldn't be a, a more perfect time to really think and, and roll back what's going on now, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, with uh, your country, our country, uh, you know, the potential of war, uh, you've got, uh, you know, economic issues, the stock market has been down drastically. And that's sort of the advantage of franchising uh, and taking advantage of franchise uh, consulting companies like uh, Top Franchise to diversify. It's the key to success and longevity. Um, you know, when, when markets are, are weak, uh, we've seen it, you know, uh, in, in the economy or or they've been, you know, for, for whatever reason, war, diversification has helped and assisted. So it's it's definitely something to, uh, you know, take advantage of. Uh, what we're going to go, go down to the next spot <clears throat> and talk about a little bit, um, you know, just what we do and who we are. Um, you know, our brands, I've been, you know, we are our, our, what we do, Fran Exchange, uh, Global Fran Exchange, we assist companies to expand overseas all throughout the world. Um, you know, the, the business right now in America is everything that you 
look at, you go and buy a car, you go in, uh, you know, to movies, you go to uh, a sports uh, stadium, everything is franchised. Um, it's just the accepted means. You, you want to get a sandwich? Am I going to go to a, a no-name uh, place or go to a, a brand where, you know, a place where there's um, a, a subway? Uh, franchising is just everywhere that you, you can see. So, and franchising is the mecca of franchising. It's been around for over, you know, 40, 50 plus years. Uh, it's, uh, you know, evolved slowly, you know, when you compare to some of the markets like the Philippines or, you know, the uh, Malaysia that have just, uh, you know, 15, 20 years ago, there was no market, uh, you know, for franchising in those markets. And now, you know, I go and I present and I speak in those markets and it's incredible to see how, uh, it's expanded so rapidly, but it is a very expect, expect, uh, accepted um, type of business here in, in franchising. There's obviously hurdles, uh, but you know the beauty of it is there's a lot of protection. There's a lot of legalities around this. Uh, you know, unlike uh, the last presentation in India, where you can guarantee a return on investment, that that'll be the quickest way to, uh, you know, getting your business taken down and eliminated and, and, you know, banned from doing business in the USA as a franchise, or if you were to ever guarantee any type of uh, success, uh, you know, success is, uh, you can have the best system in the world, uh, you know, uh, but, you know, an individual uh, that doesn't apply the systems, doesn't apply the process. Uh, you know, so it, it, I've seen, you know, my, over my 30 years in franchising, normally it's not the franchisor that's going to fail. It's the franchisee that didn't follow the system, didn't follow the process, didn't follow the blueprint. That's the beauty about franchising, right? Is that you can come in to a business uh, that is established brand. You can have systems and process and essentially a blueprint if they're an established brand uh, and, and just follow step by step what has been done, what they're doing, uh, and be trained and supported by that team. Uh, you know, the success rate in America with franchises is much higher, much higher than that of what, what uh, you know, anybody starting off on their own business uh, has. So it is the melting pot of the world. We've got brands from all over the world uh, right now. I'm, I'm currently in the process uh, uh, with Martin assisting a Japanese pancake uh, business uh, entering into the market uh, of the United States, franchising their business. They're currently set up. They opened up one location in Soho, New York City, and they're generating like 1.5 million in gross revenue. So, you know, it's very accepted. They're very open to new concepts. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what makes it exciting. But you know, there's a, a process that goes in. We're going through that process. We have to, uh, you know, set up the trademarks, the IP and the trademarks. We have to audit financial statements. They have to set up a new LLC within the, uh, in the, within the country. After that, we have to create what's called a franchise disclosure document that is <clears throat> basically the Bible and explains to prospective investors in your brand what uh, your, your offering, what uh, comes with it. And you basically, if you say it in that franchise disclosure document, you have to follow through. If you're going to give them training and support or tra initial training that involves 10 days of 40 hours to 60 hours, you have to follow through. There's no fluff. There's no uh, word or anything. You know, there's A lot of the markets throughout the world are you can say something, and not be held accountable for it. Here, if you say something in America as a franchisor, you make a promise, you say something, it better be backed up uh, within the, the uh, franchise disclosure document. You better actually do it. And uh, you, know, you better not be stepping over the grounds and making any promises uh, you know, unless you have the right in what's called an item 19, where you disclose uh, your revenue streams amongst what the franchisees are doing. Uh, so it's, it's a much different uh, country to get into. Uh, tremendous opportunities, whether it's Japanese, Middle East, 
uh, Middle Eastern, Russian brands. I mean, everything here has a home. Uh, we're very accepting to it, but there's a process. And, you know, and, and more now than ever, more now than ever, right? If you're sitting in Russia, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, you're, you're thinking, wow, are we going to get into, you know, a, a war with the U Ukraine? Now, it affects your business. Trust me, I don't care what anybody says, no matter what, people are not going to make decisions unless they feel comfortable and there's a clear horizon. Investors, markets, nobody likes uncertainty. When there, so when there's uncertainty in markets, people are hesitant to really you know, give up their money. They just don't know. So, you know, that's where the beauty of where we are today in this age, where companies like the top franchise, Fossil and, and Victor, uh, you know, they give you that ability to explore and move it, you know, look at markets and, uh, you know, put fishing rods in different markets like the Middle East, like Southeast Asia, like America, like Latin America. You know, it, it, it's it's so crucial, so important. I've been speaking on, you know, with you guys on these PowerPoint presentations for, for many times, but, you know, diversification is key and, and it's so easy compared to, you know, 15, 20 years ago. You know, we would never have technology like this. We would never be able to present like this. The, op the world is flat. The world, uh, the opportunity to expand your brand and diversify and grow throughout the world is, is just tremendous. And, you know, you, ever, you never want to be caught where you're in a situation where you didn't do that. You know, so now more than ever, it's the time to diversify your business. Um, you know, I, I spoke a little bit. I've got a whole power, power presentation here that, uh, you know, we could have went through, but I really wanted to just talk about uh, diversification, uh, the market, and what's going on right now in the current state. And I was going to leave it open for some questions if our host wanted to ask us, because I didn't want to go over time last time. I know I went over. Uh, we do have the time, actually. And I do have a couple of questions to ask, by the way. The first of which you just mentioned in your presentation regarding the tensions, uh, political tensions specifically. Uh, and so will franchising basically in the U.S. pose any issues for entrepreneurs from countries where their governments actually might experience some tension with the U.S. government, will that actually pose any risk for them when it comes to, you know, perhaps registering a business? Yeah, you know, I mean, that's that's a, a great, great question. Um, you know, one that unfortunately I'm, I'm not part of the, you know, the, the government to and, and be able to answer as far as, um, you know, as far as. In previous times, we've never been in conflict with, with Russia. There's never been any, you know, but of, of, there's always sanctions. And those sanctions are always on, uh, you know, larger financial institutions, not really on, you know, the smaller investors, the smaller individuals, the, the, the families that come over to the state. So, you know, uh, being able to set up an LLC, that's the beauty of America, right? You can... Uh, quickly within a 24 hour 36 hour span set come up with a name uh, file a trademark set up a limited liability company in Delaware or one of the other states that are there set up uh, you know get an IRS uh, you know a tax ID number fairly quickly within you know 48 hours um, and and start doing the business you know and, and start uh, you know promoting the business in uh, to America. Now there's, there's opportunities to, you know, which way you go, do you open up a physical brick and mortar location like we did, you know, with the Japanese pancake uh, place where they opened up in uh, New York city and they're doing 1.3 million. Oh, that that's, you know, one Avenue. Do you look and find a master franchise partner that is experienced here that maybe is a multi-unit operator for an orange theory or for a subway and is looking for that next big thing that could be your partner and take the franchise for America and expand you, you know, through the country. Uh, so yeah, you know, I, I've seen uh, this before, but it, it's usually at the higher level, uh, you know, but it does impact internally in your in your country. I mean, whatever happens, I mean, there's there's obviously going to be some sorts of, of setback, uh, you know. But you know, it really depends on the sanctions. But in previous years, the sanctions are always geared towards you know larger corporations, larger banks, larger you know not not the smaller individual, the small business that's looking to you know do business. 
Fantastic. You've actually already answered my second question, which is about the length uh, that it takes to actually get started. And the last one was about taxation. So do you think that uh, starting a, let's say, a franchise in the U.S. Uh, for a company that is registered uh, abroad, will that actually create some problems for taxations? Are they taxed twice or is it going to cause some problems for the investors or it's just done by and according to the U.S. law? Yeah, I mean, it, it really depends on how you structure the corporation. Uh, you know, you, you have to set up a U.S. based entity. Right. I'm not an accountant. I wouldn't wouldn't comment on on that. But, you know, there are obvious uh, tax benefits to setting up a, a corporation here in America. But no matter what, if you have a Russian or, or Japanese or, or German uh, frame, you know, business, you have to set up a separate entity. And, and, and it's easier anyway, because, you know, for auditing purposes, every franchise that uh, launches in the States has to have a financial audit. So, you know, you fund the account with $50,000 to $100,000 into, into the account. You don't have to disclose and, and go through a lengthy audit process where they have to look at the internal, uh, you know, accounts of what you're doing in your country. Uh, and, you know, that's another a reason that makes it so easy and simple. There's certain ways, right? If you know what you're doing, there's certain things that you can do, uh, you know, to streamline the process and make it a, a lot easier. And that's what we do at, at Fran Exchange. That's what we do with Top Franchise, Victor Vossel, uh, doing amazing things. That's why, you know, mentoring and getting coached and consulting, that's, that's everything these days. Learn from and grow with people that have done it numerous times that have been in the business for many years that have done this, you know, it, it's, what does it cost you a cup of coffee to take out and see what's going on with Vassal and Victor in the country or pick their brains, right? You never know where that's going to lead. Get out to some of the events that are the franchise events, network with people. There are other people, you know, these are invaluable opportunities to be able to network and pick people's brains, uh, you know, and then get coached and mentored by, you know, a group or an individual that has done this, you know, successfully. Hello. I think our host froze. That's right. So actually, I just heard you. And Alex, thank you very much for your okay. presentation. You answered all the questions and it was quite uh, precise. And thank you for your presentation. It was great. We'll be in touch. And uh, hopefully we're going to now move on to our last uh, speaker, which, by the way, has a pre-recorded speech for us. So Right now, we're going to wait for Mattis uh, Tomasic, the International Expansion Manager at La Denturia Group, basically. Uh, of course, this presentation is pre-recorded, so we'd like to actually uh, play it for you to watch, and then we'll hopefully move on with our uh, basically conclusion. Thank you. Apparently, we have a bit of a technical difficulty, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So now we're trying to actually uh, go with the recording. It's now ready, and you can actually watch it as we go with uh, the recorded performance. We can share our own experience, knowledge, and thoughts. So first of all, let me introduce our Donateria brand. We are a global donut brand uh, with 55 branches in 16 countries. In pandemic period, we grew significantly number of our branches. You can find us already in Germany, France, Spain, Czech Republic, Hungary, Slovakia. And of course, this is the first year, I mean, 2021, when we secure our first partnership in the Middle East markets like Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Dubai. 
So first of all, let me tell you just a couple of things about our, our concept, why we're getting so popular and why we're getting so much attention. First of all, we created a unique concept that it's very easy to operate. We use our own secret recipe with over 100 different flavors. We produce a gourmet quality donuts that are beautiful design and they taste awesomely. We created a stylish, chic Provence shop that attract millennials and affluent group. We operate Instagrammable business. And of course, right from the beginning, we prefer quality over the quantity. You know, these are just few features why we are getting so no notice from, uh, from franchisees. You know, I get to meet a lot of franchisees and I work with them through the selection and application process. And finally, I get to oversee their result and their performance. I would like to discuss today the biggest difference between, let's say, a poor and a wealthy or a rich mentality of a franchisees. You know, every franchisor has, has like a three segments of their partners. You have the winners, you have like a big group in between, and then you have the ones that struggle the most. You know, to boost the performance of the largest group of between is our job. We usually repeat the phrase for every partner. It's stick to the system. And of course, most of the time it works because all systems that are in, um, that we use work perfectly. But what we observe more and more that just sticking to the system is not just enough if you want to be successful. At first, if we observe what's happening is, is the circumstances at the market. It's, it's economy, it's, it's, it's governmental regulation, it's pandemic. It's external factors which we or you do not control. Usually the struggling partners complain about these, pointing out to the competition or simply higher cost of production. Of course, these are real threats to the business and every partner faces them. But it's not the whole story, especially when you observe that under the same circumstances or same factors, you are getting completely different results from your partners. Difference is that these partners, the ones that basically win, that they can adapt faster, they can find opportunities within the system. Then you have most of the people focusing on a second attribute that affect the results, which is operation. This will include recipes, branding, marketing, procedures. It's what the franchisee pays to the franchisor to teach them. Right. Every time you find a multiple partners working under the same condition, but giving completely different results. And what we observe what makes the biggest impact is a third factor. It's one factor that franchisee is too busy to bother with. It's a human level, it's a human touch to the business. It's what franchisee brings to the, their own business. And this includes mindset, ability to, to, clean, to keep a clear head and the emotion all the time check. It's the willingness to change and see improvement. It's the way how we engage with our employees and with our customers. It matters because, for example, marketing is, is not just about advertising and campaigns. It's about the patience and perfection. Managing team isn't just about the training and the growing. It's about finding the right inspiration for your team. Customer service is not just about the service. It's building the connection with your community. So we are getting partners that operate under the same system, under the same circumstances, but getting completely different results. And the answer is that they simply execute better with better leadership and the services. You know, when franchisee deviates from the system, it's not because of the operational reasons. It's a human reason as a fear, stress, mistrust. It always has impact over how they feel, not about what they know. So yes, if we compare the results of top leading partners versus the rest, 
The main difference you can find is in a human touch of the business partner. It's the leadership, it's inspiration and motivation for their team to make things better, improve, and embrace the change, no matter what's happening outside. It's a patient and desire to make the things better than they are today. So as the system can be replicated, so the mindset of the partner, that's what we observe. To enjoy the full potential of franchisee, franchisee needs to put more focus on a human factor of business. It's to go beyond the system, outside of the scope of the franchise agreement. You know, it's a lot about what we can bring to the business from the people, from the human perspective. Give you a quick example. We had a, our new partner opening a first branch in that town with just 14,000 people, one core. It's a market that we consider as very small. This partner in his first month sold a donut worth 50,000 euro. How he did it? And this is exactly what we said before. First of all, he stick to the system. He acknowledged the current situation, the current circumstance, and he followed the rules. However, the biggest difference, what really made it the, the, the difference in the results was a human touch of a partner. It was the way how he lead the business, how he lead his customers, how he lead their employees. And this made the difference in the results. You know, I can tell you a couple of more things about the factors that impact our daily business. Uh, it's, it's a hiring culture. It's a retention. It's a physical space. It's maybe circumstances as a COVID. It's a supply chain, sales marketing, competition, and time management. All these are factors that impact our daily business. And if we look at the difference between how a wealthy or a rich franchisee and a poor mentality franchisee face these kind of factors, it's a completely different path. So for example, for the hiring, a wealthy franchisee builds immediately culture. A poor mentality franchisee just trying to hire people to fill the spot. There is no, there is no human touch in the business. What about the retention? Well, the franchisee try to improve the employee experience. On the other hand, the poor, poor kind of uh, franchisee all the time complain about the job. He complains about the pace, he complains about the people. Then, for example, a physical space. A wealthy franchisee always try to improve efficiency. They try to invest in expansion. On the other hand, the poor man, the franchisee, limits the production. He thinks that if you limit it and reduce the production, you can improve the results. However, the opposite is the truth. Then, for example, a current situation as a, as a circumstance, the, the wealthy franchisee try to work hard, try to find opportunities, they try to find the different markets. On the other hand, the poor woman try to bore it, they try to bring the bring the problems when they are not. They try to cut back. Then, for example, the system or the supply chain. The most of the good ones try to collaborate, try to find the solution, try to monitor inventory. And on the other hand, the poor ones usually try to complain about the system. They say that the system doesn't work. They doesn't follow the system. And these are the main differences if we look at uh, from our observation on wealthy franchisees and a poor mentality. So if we can wrap it up, and if we can just tell you one thing to remember from, from this kind of speech is that your franchisee should focus on a human touch of the business. Of course, we will all the time tell them, stick to the system, follow the rules, it will help you. But What's very important, and this is basically even our trend for 2022, we are going to invest more time to build kind of a human touch within our franchise system. And this is very important that franchisees understand that it's them that makes the difference at the end of the day. 
it's them who can inspire, who can motivate and who can build the culture. It's their own kind of ability to lead, motivate and inspire. But this is the most important what we observe and that what we try to at the moment incorporate in our kind of daily lives. So this is just a small observation from our own experience. Okay, so thank you very much for your time. I hope that this kind of uh, few minutes that I could share our own experience was, was helpful. It gives you maybe something to think about, maybe something to use in your future business, in your future collaboration. And it was great being here today. Thank you, Top Franchise, for inviting us. And I'm looking forward for future collaboration and hopefully we see each other uh, in a short future. So thank you and I wish you a beautiful day. And that's it, guys. Uh, this wraps up today's uh, basically uh, conference. I want to first thank all of you for being here with us all the way to the end because we had to tell you why it is important to make that leap and start thinking internationally, and more importantly, start to think in terms of franchises. As was mentioned earlier, do not put all your eggs in one basket and start diversifying. And of course, the best way to do so is to think internationally, globally, and specifically in terms of putting things in brands and in other franchises that you can actually use for yourself. This wraps up today's program. Thank you very much. Uh, we took all your questions. And hopefully you found all the answers useful and relevant. To find out more, check out topfranchise.com. You will find out all the details in terms of what companies or franchises actually can reach uh, to be able to perhaps expand your business. And this is all the time we have for. My name is Daniel Morgan, and this was the Global Franchise Conference. Have a good one.